been two days basically, well, 24 hours, slightly over 24 hours since the, uh, uh, the big battle here where you guys are at. But uh, we were, where we left off uh, was just about to start combat, of course. Uh, so go ahead and give me initiative if you would. And uh, Becky, last week you, you put up mage armor and then something else. There were two things that you did right, you know, right as we were ending the session to kind of, you know, try to be as prepared as possible. Do you remember what the other thing was? I was just shooting my dancing lights toward this so I could see better. Oh, okay. All right. Nice. You remember your advantage, G? Yeah, I was just looking through my stuff because I remember we got goodies last week. Yep. Oh, speaking of, actually, I did have one thing in the pri Well, uh, two things, I suppose. Kind of already started, but we'll just get to it real quick. Uh, there will be probably a few notes in this one. The little, uh, like, clicking notes, you know, where, where I paste something to the, to the chat to, to give you guys notes on what something is. Like, uh, uh, yeah, let me just find an old one to see if it... Like, when I do these things. Is that helpful for you guys? Very, because then I could write yeah. it down without interrupting. Okay. Um, just as a thing, my headset broke, um, because the pin inside broke into my USB. I ripped it out, but my computer's no longer detecting my good headset. So I'm currently I my choices were one with a broken l uh, left <laughs> speaker or no mic at all. So until I could order another one, I'm only hearing from one side, so I might ask to repeat a bit. Okay, no problem. Uh, that actually, maybe that was what was causing it to clip out, but, uh, shit, what was I... I was going to say something else. I don't remember what it was. Uh, like I said, I'm, I'm, I'm vaguely distracted today, I think, so. Uh, anyways, all right, then, uh, that's fine, Fox, just let me know if I need to repeat anything. Um, you actually okay. sound better, if anything, you're a little bit louder than normal. Uh, I actually had to turn yeah, you down in Discord, so... <laughs> Yeah, because this mic is a bit better. Like, the headsets are all from the same company. They're all the same model, but they're a bit different, so I'm not buying those anymore because that's the third one I go through yeah. in not too long. So I'm getting a bit of a cheaper one that's not going to be nothing special, but at least it's going to be more affordable. Especially if you're going to be going through them so often, yeah. Yeah, well, this was Monk's that broke, and then mine broke to where the mic stopped working completely, and then now my other one's just not being detected at all. Gotcha. Well, this one's working okay. I mean, other than you not being able to hear out of one ear, but... Yeah, it clicks on and off sometimes, so sometimes, like, it, I'll hear from both, and then it will click off again, so it, that's a bit annoying. I'll try to I'll try to talk out of one side of my mouth, so to make sure that you hear me okay. <laughs> make sure it's nice balanced. Uh, all right, then, so if the notes are helpful, then that's good. Uh, I, I did want to ask, too, I'll, I'll save this extra for the end of the session. Uh, and then the other thing, though, for the rod of absorption, um, for, for Becky... Uh, I just wanted to to make something clear on that because I think we mentioned it briefly, but just in case because I wasn't I didn't mark it off if I had mentioned it or not. Um, so for for that to work, you have to already have it in your hand, and basically you use it as a reaction. So meaning if some you know if somebody's trying to cast a spell at you, you use it as a reaction, but you can't draw it out of out of your pocket or out of your you know backpack or anything like that, and then use it as a reaction together. Uh, it is a free action to take it out and put it in your pocket, or put it in your hand, rather, but you have to do that on your turn. Does that make sense? Yeah. So basically, you know, if, if basically if somebody's trying to cast something at you and you don't already have it in your hand, it's already too late. But if you've, you know, on your turn, you realize that there might be a caster on the field or something like that, somebody that they could be a potential risk, you pull it out then, and then you can use a reaction if it comes up. So. Okay. All right. Then, with that all out of the way, uh, where we left off, um, a very large shadowy shape is rushing straight at Sarah. Uh, oh, i got to show you guys the map. Uh, you guys can see my fantastic art skills on this one. Yeah, and I'm still a couple feet off the ground. On yeah, the you're you're floating up on, on the broom uh, a little bit off the ground. Uh, this thing is large enough that I'll, I'll basically I'll tell you that that's not going to matter. Uh, it's, it's jaws would be at like Norok's head height. So, I mean, it's, it's, it's far taller. Basically where you're at is not anywhere near out of its range. Um, let me share you actually the VA for the hound as well. Uh, whoops, that's the wrong one. Uh, but, so I'm just going to go ahead and share that image to everybody. So you guys all see that. Let me know when you have it. Got it. So sure. that is is the thing that's charging at you, but like I said, height-wise, it's it's you know its its mouth would be like able to bite Norok's face. Uh, so even with you floating off the ground, you're probably still only at like you know the shoulder or the chest of it. But 
Uh, one, uh, Artemé and Norok are facing Samson, who is kind of looking the same direction as you are. Uh, you were facing towards the cops in the trees, because you were the only one that saw this thing there. Uh, so Norok and Artemé don't see this thing, I guess, is how I'd say that, yet. Uh, but we'll, you know, leave it up to, to how combat rolls out for what happens here. Um, but this thing is uh, bounding through the, the the shadows here. That there's it's it's pretty dim out. The the uh, the black moon is full, and you can see it just fine because you can see through the darkness just fine. Uh, but it's the smallest of the moons, and it obviously doesn't give up much light. Uh, the red moon is a is a crescent, and the blue moon's a crescent. So basically, there just isn't a whole lot of light other than the light you guys have have uh, you know created with your uh, dancing lights and so on. Um, but this hound is is chasing straight towards you. Um, I'm gonna leave it at, at that, I suppose, for now. Um, but it did roll first. Uh, Fox, can you give me a roll for Sai? And then I need to make one for Samson too. I did. She got three. Oh, sorry, I didn't see it. There we go. Uh, hers is two, right? So for a total of five. Mhm. Mm and he got a fifteen. There we go. All right. Um. Sarah's probably going to be the only one that gets to go initially because this is kind of a surprise. Uh, the, this massive creature, though, that you see come come bolting towards you, uh, you had enough time you could potentially have, have you know gotten something. I guess I guess your that was last session actually. It was putting up the mage armor and then moving the dancing lights over it. Uh, so you just see the shadowy thing kind of bolting towards you, um, but it uh, impacts square into you, uh, almost not even trying to to uh, attack. It doesn't seem, but. Uh, it does smash square, square into your chest, actually, and it does hit. Um, and you feel its jaws bite into uh, around your entire arm up to the shoulder, almost basically of your, your left arm. Uh, almost wrist up to shoulder is how big its mouth is, uh, which is going to hurt pretty bad. A 14, um, and give me a strength save, and you need to be 13. It, uh, it clamps its jaws down around you and tries to swing you to the left and then swing you back to the right. Um, you feel it just kind of tearing through the flesh in your arm, uh, but it doesn't, it, it, isn't able to, it isn't able to yank you off of the broom as the broom just kind of swings out from underneath you. Uh, it's going to uh, release and then... <sighs> yeah, it's going to bite you again, actually. Uh, for a 20, which still hits. Or another 18 damage. <laughs> that's that's a uh, that looks pretty bad for you already. Um, give me another strength save if you would. Uh, okay, you still successfully kind of kind of pull yourself away and start to kind of you know shift away with the broom slightly. Um, and as you are looking at this thing, it uh, bursts into the, a, a cloud of shadowy kind of wispy smoke. Uh, that, that just boils up out of it, and then it melts into into the, this cloud and is dis and is gone from sight. That is it, so that everybody can see it, but it has disappeared. And it is Norok's turn. So you just heard uh, a growling, snarling uh, uh, attack, and probably a little squeal from Sarah at least, as, as she was bitten pretty pretty hard twice uh, over your over your right shoulder. What are you doing? All right, I'm going to turn around. And there's nothing there. And yeah, I'm going to turn around and uh, ask, "What the hell happened? I heard something." To you, that and Sarah's Sarah. is bleeding profusely out of her left shoulder. Uh, like it's it, like there is, you can almost not see an arm. It's just covered in blood, uh, pouring out of her left shoulder, just just barely hanging onto this broom floating above the ground. Okay. And you I can, you can sorry, to... you can respond. I just wanted uh, Becky. I just wanted to, to kind of give him a description of what he's saying. Yeah, uh, there's this shadowy hound that just disappeared. It bit me and just ran. <laughs> okay, then I am going to. Uh, I would assume it would be right about here. So I'm going to. Actually, you know what? I'm going to run up from where I was. I'm going to run and kind of see if I can tackle like in front of you know like run and be ready to tackle if i hit something in front of becky because she had, would assume that that's where it is but swinging blindly is probably not a good idea with her right there so okay um make a uh, it'd be probably be kind of a charge attack i suppose uh make an attack with disadvantage 
because you can't see anytime you can't see your target you it's always with disadvantage it doesn't matter whether it's actually there or not basically basically i'm telling you that way so that whether it's there or not you wouldn't know so you're just trying to swing at something and even if it was there you just have disadvantage because you wouldn't be able to see it although with its size yeah. i may i may give you adjust the the ac of the creature a bit if okay. it was if it was in the right place you don't need a target just roll an attack with you know just uh making an unarmed strike is fine there you go Oh, okay. I used. Doesn't okay. matter. It doesn't matter which okay. one it is. Uh, your your modifier is going to be the same exactly. So it wouldn't matter okay. in this case. Um, but you go charging through like elbow, or not elbow, uh, like shoulder. You know, kind of, kind of uh, like a football rush basically um, uh, through open air. Where were you trying to kind of stop yourself? I would have ran through probably about like that far or so. Okay. And like ready to hit something. I'm not going to run and dive so I don't fall on my face and there's nothing there. But if okay. I hit something, I'm going to be ready to shoulder hit it. Okay. You know, uh, you, so, go, like, you, go, you go barreling through empty space and, and kind of slow yourself and stop and, and, you know, stand up and look around and you don't see anything. There's no disturbance in the in the mud. Uh, so you look down at where footprints should have been from what she described and you don't see anything. Okay. Then I am going to... Move here. I think I have enough movement for that, and then I'm going to just be on alert. So. Okay. Yeah, you have 40 feet, so you should be there. Are you facing east? Uh, okay. I'm going to just a tad that way, so I can, you know, still. Okay. Try to... Okay. All right. Uh, you hear from behind you. Then uh, you hear Samson shouting, "What was that?" And he, uh, hang on, the grid is kind of hard to see with this ugly map I made. <laughs> He makes it to here uh, and uh, is kind of looking around, trying to see what happened. And then he turns towards uh, towards Sarah, uh, seeing Sarah is since he doesn't see any any uh, aggressor, he doesn't know exactly what happened yet. Um, he, while drawing uh, his greatsword off of his back with with one hand, uh, he reaches out with his left hand um, and how can I, I think I hold control? Hang on. Damn it! I don't know what it. Okay. Uh, he's going to cast Cure Wounds on Becky, but uh, he's going to reach out, touch Becky's shoulder uh, for a total of nine healing. Whoops, which I just applied to. I tried to apply to himself, but let me heal that on Becky here. There we go. Uh, a little better. She only had seven hit points. She would have been knocked out, but uh, uh, as he finishes that, he just kind of reaches out with his left hand, uh, touches your shoulder, and then he turns around uh, and then finishes drawing his greatsword out, uh, you know, in case something comes back. Uh, Sarah's turn. Okay, first, I am going to cast. Uh, where is it? Uh, there it is. Uh, false life, but I'm going to cast it at third level. Okay. So that's an additional 10 hit points to whatever this is. Okay. On yourself, you mean? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, that's so awful. Uh, okay, so. <laughs> It's well. Wait, the where's the four come from? It's one d four plus four, and then for every level above is an additional five. Oh, okay. All right. So it'll be fifteen total then, temporary hit points. Yeah. All right. There you go. I just put it on there for you. That was probably a good idea because this thing can kind of bite your head off with <laughs> with one if it rolls high enough, especially if it gets a crit. Uh, and I mean, then just, go ahead. I'm going to back up. Okay. Twenty-five, thirty. And still kind of d d backing up that direction while facing, you know, to the southeast? Yeah. Okay. Wherever it was at, I'm backing just straight back. Okay. That if your turn then? All right. Yep. Artemis turn. Okay, so we can't see this thing at all? Correct. You don't see anything. In fact, when you turned around, there was nothing there. There's just just a, a huge pouring wound, uh, multiple pouring wounds of... of uh, I, uh, make a quick perception check on, uh, on Artemis. Um, the the puncture wounds in uh, Sarah's left shoulder, you were close to her left shoulder, um, the puncture wounds that were there are spread apart so far that a the creature that, that you know that would have a mouth that large would have to be very, very big. And you're looking around and don't see anything. Okay. Uh, you I'm going to ask her if run. she could still see it. Oh, shit. Um, God damn it. Okay. Uh, 
I screwed up there, guys. <laughs> I'm gonna have to retcon a little bit. Uh, Sarah, you can actually still see it just fine. I just can't reveal it on the map because then Norok and Artemis can see it. Okay, so is it still where it would have been when it attacked? No. When it when it exploded in that cloud of black smoke, uh, it it moved away, and it, it 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 backed itself up, and it's still there, snarling and growling, and looks like it's about to charge you again. But you can still um, see it fine. I just like I, I, if I reveal it on the map, then Norok and, and Artemy can see it as well. I, sorry, I screwed that up. So so you would know where it is if you want to uh, roll back and kind of change your action. That's fine. Because you do you do see it. Like you were, it would have been a surprise to you that Norok and Artemy can't see it. So sorry, I messed that up. Five thirty. Okay, I probably would have moved diagonally then, knowing that it was still right in front of me. <laughs> uh, it moved. It teleported yeah. away. It basically blew up in the cloud of smoke and then re it, it did essentially a, a shadowy version of Misty Step. So it teleported itself a little bit away and then began to charge again. But where you went is further away from it than, than where you were before, so... Okay, okay but um, I'm trying to ask her where it is now. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, I just described to her where I see it. I have a question. Can I move my dancing lights on a... Does it have to be an action to move them? Uh, no, on a bonus action, I can move them. Okay. So I'm going to surround myself with my dancing lights then, so that way it's bright light right around me. Uh, dancing lights is torchlight, isn't it? Uh. I think, I think both can... regular light and dancing light is torchlight. I think. My light is. I touch an object and turn it into a light. It's not a torch. Okay, so dancing light says torch-sized lights. Uh, appear as torches, lancers, or glowing orbs. Uh, um, each light sheds dim light in a ten-foot radius. Yeah, so it's not it's not like sunlight or anything of that sort. It's all dim light. Okay. And I think regular light is the same. It's enough for you guys to see. It's just not. It's not any, that bright. It's exactly. It's not use, like sunlight or daylight. I'd have to use daylight for actual light. Correct. But... Yeah. Um, right. They don't and... spread out much. Okay. Uh, spread out like where? Like, just around everybody, as far okay. as I can get them. Uh, light actually is bright light in a 20-foot radius. It's still not sunlight, but bright light in a 20-foot radius. So uh, around Artemy is a 20-foot radius uh, of much brighter light than what's around you. Yeah, and Sai also has a light on her. Did you cast it? I guess you could. It's a cantrip. You could do it on both. I need yeah, to on I cast it. Like, I have, one on my, um, I have one on my belt, and then, like, with that's, like, a loop, and it's just, like, sitting in a loop, and then heard a collar cool. or necklace okay so the the field itself around you guys is pretty pretty well lit uh you still can't see anything but sarah can see it just fine okay so, so, again, so I'm uh, asking her yeah to Artemis, point out where it is yeah just tell her where i can see it is uh, is that a surprise to sarah like is she might be is she panicking in this moment that this thing just just ripped her in half practically and then you know, teleported away, and then no, you know, apparently Norok and Sarah can't, Sarah and Norok and Artemis can't see it. Probably not so much that they can't see it. She's probably just freaking out because she got attacked. Because she did see the one on top of the hill, and it just disappeared. Yeah. So. And you you have felt them around more than once. This isn't the first time. This is just the first time that they actually got close enough and attacked. So that's probably freaking her out more than the fact that they can't see it. Okay, so you describe that it is off to the south. So you kind of are you just pointing to the southeast a bit, or what? Uh, yeah, just as direct as I can. Okay. It where it is. So then I, I could ask you to put it on there, but I don't want it to be too too unfair because you pointing to the southeast would give you a, you know kind of a, a general idea, not a specific one. She points in this kind of general area is the direction she points to. Everybody okay. see that? That that sound yeah. fair, Becky? Yeah. Okay. Okay, I'm going to use plant growth. Okay. No, not sorry, spike growth on it. Okay. In that area. Yeah. All right. Um, let me give you your token here. Did I save that one? No, I didn't. Oh, I need to fix that token too, because this is one of the ones that's always a pain to resize. It's actually really easy to fix to it, just keep forgetting to do it. I can put a, uh, uh, what's the radius on it, Fox? The radius is two, hang on, I hit the wrong, uh, it's a 
20 foot radius. Jeez. Alright, then... That's 15. That's a 20 foot radius. <laughs> Alright, go ahead and put that wherever you want it to be. Uh, ben, you saw the red circle, right? Yeah, it's still there. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and remove it. I just wanted to make sure that you knew the general area. Alright. Okay, there we go. I put that there. Okay. So now, if he tries to move in here, um, it's gonna get, like, it's seen me cast it, so it's gonna know it's there, but it is, um, every time it moves in there, it's gonna take damage, uh, 2d4 piercing damage, for every 5 feet it travels, and it's, um, difficult travel. Okay. Um, go ahead and make, uh, you've, you've already casted it. You know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna give you a 50/50 shot. Make a uh, just roll a flat d20 for me, Fox. And if you're a 10 or above, well, natural 20. Okay. All right. Then I'm gonna give you a chance to to uh, adjust if you choose to. If you feel like Artemis would, don't don't meta it. But basically, you uh, in looking over there, not seeing anything, you also looked for the paws of this creature. After I would say probably looking in the um, you know in the in the, the gaping wound that's in uh, Sarah's shoulder. You then looked at the ground to see if maybe you could spot footprints. Maybe it's just an invisible creature of some kind, uh, and you didn't see any footprints. Would okay. Artemis still have put up the spike growth, you think, having having seen that there were no footprints on the ground? Well, if it's a creature of darkness, it wouldn't necessarily leave footprints either. That's that's totally fair. I'm just saying, would you know? Would you think that Artemis would still put spike growth up? I would try to hurt it with the spike growth. Yes. Okay. All right, then go ahead and mark off the spell slot if you didn't already. Already. Did. Okay, and was that was that's a action. Do you have any bonus actions? No. Okay, and you stepped away, and and uh, Sai's going to come with you, I assume. Yep. All right. Uh, she's doing anything else, or, or just coming with you? Uh, no, just coming with me for now. She can't really do much if we can't see it. Okay. Um, all three of you uh, hear um, a snarling uh, uh, howl. Uh, and rushing sounds like a you know like a, a very large dog trying to run like full speed, um, and there's an impact that is as uh, teeth scraping against steel, um, and you see Samson bolt over backwards. Um, it will we'll roll it, but uh, uh, you can actually see it uh, just for for the briefest of seconds. As soon as this impact happens, you see this massive hound uh, standing over Samson as he's as he's uh, uh, smashed into him, uh, which hits. Um, the teeth clamp down into the steel. Actually, you hear the, the steel begin to buckle. Uh, Samson doesn't even even shout or anything. He actually drops his sword and, and is trying to, to push him off. Uh, sword dropped into the uh, into the mud. Uh, but he succeeds um, on the on the strength save, uh, and then the creature uh, explodes in, in smoke again and disappears, um, and uh, reappears a few feet away, directly in front of Norok. Oops, hang on, let me drop that. Um, for a 21, that hits. Uh, G, give me a strength save. You'd have to be the 13. Uh, okay, so it clamps down on your arm, and you feel it try to yank you down to the ground. Um, but its its teeth let go, um, and it kind of just steps steps away from you. Uh, you won't have long, but you'll have an opportunity attack. Um, it did appear to have rushed through the spike growth, though, uh, Artemis, and it doesn't seem like it slowed it down at all. Whether it hurt or not, you don't know. You, you, there are no wounds appearing on this thing. You guys haven't really had any chance to really try to hurt it, uh, but you don't know that you would even be able to see it. It looks like it's made of shadow. Okay. Uh, for simplicity's sake, though, go ahead and roll the damage on it. It would have been three of them, so three steps. Uh, the attack missed G. Okay. Are you muted, Ben? I haven't heard you say anything. There we go. Okay. All right. Um, and then it... Oh, shit, actually, it can't this time. Um... So it, it backs away, uh, G, you, you miss it, and it just kind of kind of just walking backwards on its haunches and growling um, until it's stepped to about here. And that is it for its turn. Your turn. Okay. It is extremely strong. Uh, like, it was... 
even let's see how well did you roll on yours let me look again um yeah you beat it you beat the uh the, the transfer to knock you down but it did feel it felt very strong if it pulled you down it would probably be uh very dangerous okay can i still see it or did it disappear it did again? not disappear it disappeared in the middle after it bit samson and then disappeared and, and bit you and then backed away it has not disappeared again yet okay its bonus action is what it uses to disappear, and it used that in the middle as opposed to so it couldn't do it again at the end, basically. Okay. Yeah. Alright, well, he made me mad, so. Alright, now that I can actually see the bastard, I'm going to see if I can go hit him. What are all those little icons that pop up on the map? Oh, I guess you guys don't see those, do you? Oh, they're effects. Mm -hmm. That's cool. I've never noticed those before. I don't see them. Yeah, they, I think only I see them as a DM. Because it's all of the effects that are in the in the combat tracker. Oh. There's little icons for all of them on the tokens. <laughs> they're too small to be useful, though. I can't read what they're supposed to be until I zoom in. Oh. Asshole. You die now. <laughs> all right, uh... <laughs> You you're and I'm using your... my uh, extra damage too. Okay. On my uh, um, tribal theory. Uh, what was that, G? Sorry. Uh, it was your great axe, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, now that this thing is visible, you guys can actually see it uh, at least for for a moment here. Um, it is it's a just a dappled gray, and the coat is just constantly shifting. Like it's hard to, to even focus on it. It seems like it's like blurry. Like the creature itself is blurry, um, but there's an old scar across the right side of its face. The, the ear, the right ear, is completely torn off, and its right eye is missing. And that it looks like a bear, like a bear uh, claw, uh, kind of a scar that is scratched across the entire right side of its face. Uh, it's very okay. distinctive uh, for how it appears. Um, it does make a memory check on Sarah. This is the first time Sarah's gotten a good look at it. Jesus, dude, forty-one. <laughs> Asshole. <laughs> That's a good, good, uh, good roll. I still got two more attacks. Too. Uh, that one, no, that's Sarah's roll. Um, it does not look like the one you saw on the in the desert. Mm. You, got, size, you didn't though? see it, just Sarah. What's that? Same size though. Yeah, looks like it's the same kind of a creature. Just doesn't. It's it, the 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 feature that specific scar on its face doesn't look the same as the one you saw. Or maybe it was just too dark for you to see. You don't necessarily, you know, know for sure. Maybe the scar is more recent than that, but it doesn't seem like it would have had time to heal. And this is an old scar. It looks like it's different. All right, go ahead and make your other attack, G. All right. Oh, I forgot to do the extra damage to plus 10 for the Great Weapon Master. Was that added on there? Uh, I don't you think had I had 16. That you was 16 in there, didn't you? Uh, I, I didn't. See. Nope, it I isn't on there. Him. Nope, okay. okay. Uh, I'll just add it to him. <laughs> um, your, the special for that one, uh, <laughs> that's funny. Uh, the special for that one was called Eye Gouge. It says, in addition to standard critical hit damage, your target is blinded until the end of its next turn. Oh, sweet. That's nice. All right, uh, there you go. Okay. I just added the damage to him. Uh, that misses. Dang. But okay. you brought you brought the, that, this kind of cleaving swing uh, across that same scar just because it was just over your right shoulder, so it's you know the, the angle of it was easy for you to, to uh, kind of go for for the side of its face, um, and it, it, it kind of carves down through it. But your axe just passes square <laughs> through it. It doesn't. <laughs> Jeez, uh, the axe just passes passes through it. It doesn't look like it's it's bleeding. It like it definitely feels like it's hurt. Like you felt like it hurt it, but it, okay. it, it, but it's not bleeding. It's not bleeding. It's not. It doesn't look like it's wounded. It just passed square through it. It just slowed slightly, uh, which is the impression you got that you know hopefully it hurt. Um, okay. But the second swing does does nothing. It just just goes right through it and just you know blurs slightly again. Uh, and you bring it back down in another kind of downward strike, just similar to the first one, uh, which does connect. Go ahead and roll the damage on it. <laughs> 41 and a 36. That might be the highest damage, uh, you know, single turn we've had so far. Mm -hmm. I don't think we've had one quite that high yet. Uh, 41 and 36. Uh, 77 damage. All right, good swing. Uh, Samson's turn. Uh, he 
Uh, you hear him shout something. It's it's like like a it's a, a language you don't understand. Uh, but he shouts something, um, and his with his great sword drawn comes kind of kind of charging forward to try to. Uh, uh, yeah, he can just barely get around these uh, these spikes to try to swing at the uh, the shadow creature here, uh, which misses. Um, he no, he, he would not have extra attack actually, so he doesn't get that. Um, but he is going to uh, he he makes his swing, uh, leaving his arms kind of kind of near the front of it, and sees that that uh, well, that's actually yeah, because he can do that as a bonus action. Never mind, that's it for his turn. He, he makes that swing and misses, um, and then, you know, it's, it's just in front of the creature there. Sarah's turn. 10, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15. 30. We're gonna go there. Okay. And... Would Sarah have made the connection from her dream that this is probably one of the hounds that he said he was gonna send after her? Yeah, I would say that she probably made that connection after when when uh, the eye showed up. Uh, did I? Did everybody know about that? I, I don't think that Sarah ever mentioned that to Norok and Artemis, right? No, I don't think. Yeah. Okay, all right. But Sarah would have put that together though. That that when the eye showed up and was taunting her when she was trying to sleep, uh, that the hound that you had seen a few days before was probably what he was talking about. So you, so this hound being here would not be a surprise. In that sense, and that she would expect that yes, this is coming from uh, from Shadow Throne specifically for her. All right, I'm going to use Dragon's Breath. Okay. Uh, with that angle, or are you trying to just cone it so that it would just be like you're basically aiming it off to his oh. left? Oh, shoot! That's right. It's fifteen. It's a big area, yeah. Like, you'd hit Norok and probably Samson, unless you were moving closer and, like, kind of aiming it in a very particular way. All right, yeah, I tried to make it so I couldn't hit them, so even if it's just, like, the side of him, I guess. Well, if you were 30 feet to where you are, he's 25 from you. What's the distance of the cone? It's... Uh, oh, it's only a 15 foot cone. Yeah, I don't There's think you can go quite that enough. far. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Alright, then. You can take your spell slot back if you already marked it. Alright, well, I'm still gonna leave it up as my bonus action. Okay. And then. I if guess you're gonna I'll do another spell, it'd have to be a cantrip with one action as the cast time. All right, then I'm going to use Chill Touch then. Instead of Dragon's Breath, or are you going to use... I guess you... Never mind, you could do both. Yeah, you could do cantrips, uh, since you're a uh, one-action cantrip. Yeah. All right, so catch that. Okay. Uh, and it hits. You wouldn't be considered un dead, right? Uh, you wouldn't know, but um, I guess you would probably, well, okay. You, Sarah wouldn't know, is how I'd tell you that, but he is not. Okay. You probably have an idea what he is already anyways. Becky probably does, I imagine, but, uh, but Sarah wouldn't. Okay. Um, um, yeah, then that's it. Okay. Then it is Artemis' turn. You can actually see this this shadowy hound, although it does look like it's preparing to disappear again. Um, I'm gonna use daylight on it. Okay. And drop, um, Did you have daylight prepared? Yep. You, oh, never mind. That's one of your it's automatic It's always ones. prepared. Yep. Yeah, it's always prepared. Um, that's a that's I'm a handy mix with you and a shadow sorcerer. Drop uh, spike growth. Yeah, spec growth. Okay. And then just use daylight. Let me drop this Not that off. I have to drop it, but there's no point in having it if it's not going to hurt. Well, you don't know whether it hurt him or not, is what I'm saying. You, could, you couldn't that's tell. True. It didn't slow him, that's for sure. But you don't know whether it hurt him or not. You still want me to take it off? Yeah. Okay. So the muddy ground kind of settles back down yeah, again. It doesn't look like 60 it's... 60-foot radius. Anymore. Okay. Like, 
Um, just from you, uh, spreads out from a point you choose within range. I'm gonna put it right on top of him. Okay. Uh, it, that pretty much covers this whole area, so I, I'm not gonna bother putting a circle on there just because it basically would cover this almost the entire area that you guys are in. Okay. Um, and that was your action. Any bonus? It didn't last for an hour, geez. Uh, any bonus actions? Um. Or movement? Can I, can I hit it with, or try and hit it with my green whip as a bonus? No, that would be an action to, to make an attack. Uh, okay. you have um, your healing spirit. No, healing spirit is, a, is an action to cast. No, it yeah, is a bonus action, action to cast. No, it's a bonus action to cast. I just checked. Yeah. So okay. you could do that or like healing word or something if you wanted to. Or Shalele. And look, that's it. Looks like for all of your bonus actions. I'll do healing spirit. Okay. Uh, here is your token. Go ahead and move it wherever you're casting it. Just put it there because Sarah's pretty badly hurt. Okay. Is that if your turn then? That's it. Right. Yeah. Did you mark off your spell slots? Yes. Uh, hang on. Daylight. Uh, sorry, I screwed up there. Uh, daylight being your action, you wouldn't be able to do uh, healing spirit at the same time. Because oh. it's a, well, so, you know what, I already said it, so I'm going to go ahead and, and just, just leave it for, for this turn. Basically, to cast two spells in the same turn, uh, well, it's actually not even that specific. What it is specifically is anytime you cast a spell that takes a bonus action, in, in the same turn, in your turn, uh, you can, the only other spells you can cast are cantrips that take one action, and that's it. It's basically oh. it's to prevent some specifically overpowered things, but that's what the rule is. Um, but I'd already I'd already said so. We'll just leave it like it is because you, you didn't do one of the ones that's you know game breaking anyways. So uh, we'll just leave it oh, like that for okay. now. Um, is daylight is not concentration, right? No, it's nope. not. Okay, All that's right. what I'm saying. I don't really have to let go of spike growth, but because it doesn't seem to have done anything, I want to keep up the concentration <coughs> on it sure. just in case. But you do have healing spirit up, so go ahead and put the concentration up for healing spirit. Oh, right. And then is Sai doing anything? No. Okay. Then it is comes back around to the Hound. Uh, all of you see it, uh, similar to the the previous time, uh, just kind of erupt in this this uh, you know shadow cloud, uh, and it disappears again um, for just a, a brief second, and then reappears uh, directly in front of Sarah, already bouncing through the air, like like charging through the air. Uh, Sarah make a strength save, and this time you have to beat an 18. For 20, all right. So it comes, come basically you know, reappears in the air above you almost and comes kind of kind of barreling towards you um, out of the air. Uh, and you kind of deftly... Are you still on the broom or did you get down? Oh, I assumed that he had knocked me off of the broom. No, you're, you're, because you were because you made the saves, you were still on the broom, just kind of kind of pushed yourself away, like barely holding on to the broom when you flew away. Oh. Yeah, well, so you're basically I'm holding on with one arm. Your left arm is probably pretty numb and messed up, but your right arm is still holding on to the broom. All right, then I probably would have stayed on it. Uh, well, no, I can't. If my left arm got hit and I'm holding on with my right, I can't be on the broom. Because I don't have a right hand. Oh, well, you do, <laughs> but not in that sense. That's true. Uh, okay, all right, so yeah, you would have, and plus, actually, for any spells that, that took uh, somatic components, you would have had to use your hand for that anyways. So, and actually, <laughs> uh, I may, I didn't, but I, I maybe should have imposed some disadvantage on that since your left arm is all jacked up. But I would say that you actually can still cast spells with your right hand anyway, even though if it's shadowy. Um, so never mind in that sense. But, uh, alright, but it comes comes barreling down, uh, like, with its paws trying to push you over. Uh, but you dodge out of the way. Uh, the broom is, you, uh, we'll just say that you threw it over your back. Um, but it is still going to try to bite you. For a 24, which does hit. Uh, for 17, which... Um, oh, you kept your concentration up. Your, oh, on Dragon's Breath, okay. Um, so you succeeded on your concentration, but uh, it did just chomp right through all of your, your temporary HPs. And is going to try to bite you a second time. For a natural one. <laughs> uh... You hit an ally with a basic attack, but he doesn't have any allies around, so that wouldn't, wouldn't matter. Uh, and that is it for its turn. Yeah. Uh, it is still still directly in front of you, just, just chomp down on you hard, and then uh, try to bite you a second time, but you just kind of yanked your arm out of the way. Norak's turn. 
<laughs> okay. And he is still visible, you said, right? He didn't disappear again? Right. Yeah, he's still visible. Yeah. Okay. Trying to bite Sarah. Let's see if I can whack him. Oh, also, uh, before I do this, can I look at him, uh, perception check, to see if he's wearing a collar? And if, or, and if so, does it have any metal on it? Um... I would say I you wouldn't. Know if he had a collar There's not, it, so. it's so bright now with daylight up that you that's not even a roll. You'd be able to see that he's not wearing a collar. Okay. Okay. It doesn't appear to be any metal on him at all. He, in fact, he doesn't look like he's even solid. He looks like he's like wispy smoke. Okay. Let's see if I can hit him again. Uh, it misses. Both miss, yeah. Damn it. Okay. And I will try again. Okay. That hits. The axe swings through his his hindquarters, uh, but you don't see any you know any reaction. Uh, it passes through him and it's slowed, so it feels like it probably did hurt him, but you don't see any reaction to him. Okay. He still seems you know kind of very aggressively uh, snapping his jaws in Sarah's face. Last swing. Uh, misses. Dang. Okay. Um, now he seems like it's slowing down and stuff. Does he seem like he's in any way, like hurt at all, or Not is he even just as feisty as the entire time? Yeah, he yeah, doesn't. Okay. He doesn't seem like he's he's even being affected by this. Now you feel because it did slow when it passed through him some of the times and not the others. Uh, each I would say each of these swings seems like it should have hit, uh, meaning that you know the swing went through the creature, but a couple of the times it slowed and a couple of times it didn't. Okay. So it felt like it was sinking into something. Just it still seemed very airy. Um, like sinking through water almost a couple of the times, and then the other times just as if it was a complete miss. Yeah. Oh, uh, it, if you don't mind, can I use my bonus action to use my um, um, inspiration to do the couple of hit dice? Heal. Is it yeah, okay, okay if I do that? Yep. Because I, I just ended my turn, but okay. Yep, no problem. Cool. Uh, Samson uh, is rushing around seeing that Sarah. Well, I guess with your temper HPs, you didn't take too much more damage from that. Um, he's a cleric, by the way. You guys wouldn't, you know, that's, again, that's. In world, people don't think of this guy's a barbarian. This guy's this is a sorcerer or anything like that. But he is a as far as his actual class as a war cleric. Um, he is going to rush up and try to uh, swing at the creature again as well, uh, seeing that, that nobody is you know in desperate need of healing at the moment. Uh, but he it's a, or the great sword swings straight through it, right through the middle of it, as if he was trying to chop it in half, uh, and just sinks into the mud. Uh, and he, he just murmurs a curse, and then kind of kind of yanks it back out of the mud uh, and brings it back up like he's going to try to swing again. Sarah's turn. Crap. This thing seems relentless and completely unfazed by everything you've done so far. Did it take my action to try to talk to it? No, talking is generally a free action. Um, I would say that you probably have noticed something by now, that, that when Artemy put up the daylight, uh, he hasn't been able to stay invisible so far. He still teleported, but he was just basically only invisible for... He basically teleported, not even invisible for any more than a fraction of a second as he disappeared from one place and reappeared in the other. But he hasn't been able to stay invisible so far. Okay, and the hits he's taken while he's had to <clears throat> sorry. While he's had to stay visible, have they done any more damage, it looks like, than when he was able to he's, teleport? He's swirling smoke. It's hard to like he's not bleeding. It's hard to see if he's actually taking any damage at all. Like it's you literally swing it okay. Uh back when people used to smoke in restaurants. Like, we're old enough to recognize that. I know Fox not. Fox isn't, but uh, I don't know if in, in Canada. In Canada, they probably never were allowed. 
but down no, here. No, there were. There was smoking. <laughs> I know what that is. <laughs> Why do people keep thinking I'm mind? Uh, I'm just kidding. I'm just picking on you. <laughs> but anyway, um, back then, though, you used to see, like, people, when they would smoke at a bar, you'd see those kind of swirls where the fans and everything would kind of push it down from the ceiling, right? But if anybody yeah. walked through the cloud, how it would kind of billow around them, that's what this thing looks like. So anytime it's, it's, anytime it's cut through, it's just the smoke just swirls around it as if it's not being touched. But it is taking very, very meaty chunks out of, out of, with each bite out of your arm. Mm -hmm. Um... And Samson's and Norok. Although Norok killed himself. Alright, so I'm just gonna tell him that I know who sent him. And I want to know what he wants. Make a persuasion check. With disadvantage. Uh, persuasion? Yep. Oh, that's good. I'm great at persuasion. <laughs> Not with a disadvantage, you weren't. <laughs> you rolled a two. Uh, I mean, for a total of eight, but you still got a two. Um, he seems... Uh, you know what? I, okay, make a perception check on Sarah as well. Uh, and Artemay, too, actually, because Artemay, you're right in, right in its face, too, so we'll see. If, oh, uh, Becky, would have you would have had another heal on Sarah for 1d6 from the Spirit. If you want to roll that, Fox. At the start of her turn. Um... It, you can't even tell if he understood what you're saying. It, the, the eyes are nothing. Well, the eye is nothing but rage. One eye is, is, you know, basically that scar is there. You can still see that in the shadow. So something hurt it at some point, but you don't. You guys don't seem to be able to, as far as you can tell. Um, there's the heal for a four to say. Okay, cool. You already have her targeted. Okay, uh, but you can't tell if he even understood at all what you were saying. This this thing seems like a, a unrelenting force coming after you for sure. You still have your dragon's breath up, although the angle you're at, you're probably going to burn Norok a little bit. Alright, I'm going to... I would tell you guys that um, the amount of damage that you're not sure has been applied or not would be 124. That's how much that you should have hurt this thing so far, if it's being hurt by this. So you guys have done a, a lot of damage to this thing already. Norox was 77, I think it was, in that first round. All right, yeah, I'm just going to hold out my right hand that has the spell shadowy and okay. just tell him to stop and I'll do whatever his master wants and I'm just going to hold my action. I'm going to hold Dragon's Breath for if he attacks me again. What did you do uh, regarding the glove situation? At that point, I probably wouldn't have been thinking about Mage Hand, so it's probably just... So you just got a, you know, a limp glove hanging off your wrist? Yeah. Because they're, like, uh, tell me, I guess, because, cause, you know, noble gloves, they could be long, but, because if the glove cut off at the wrist, there wouldn't be anything for it to hold on to. If it's a long enough glove that it's, like, you know, far enough down the wrist that it could still be hanging off the end of your wrist, then it would still work. Does that make sense? Yeah, it probably would have been, I don't know, maybe a couple inches above the wrist, but not, okay. like, super long. I'll tell you then that you can already tell that that glove is starting to feel loose, and it's probably going to fall off in the next couple of hours, based on if that shadow spot continues to grow, there won't be anything left unless you just put it on the end of the stump. Alright. But for now, it can still be there. Uh, but you're, you're just trying to hold it out to it? Uh, and yep, then just holding out the shadow hand and holding my action for if the attacks. Okay. It's dragon's breath. Okay. Artemis' turn. Well, I'm gonna re-heal her. Cause I think healing her was, it was a bonus action, right? Uh, in, for healing word, if you're using the healing word spell, yes. Oh, okay, Never mind. no. Um, I was gonna say for the healing spirit, but no. The I'm healing spirit gonna... is just at the start of her turn, which, which just went off, yeah. so. She's trying to talk to it, I'm just gonna move over here so I don't lose concentration or Oh, yeah, on the healing spirit, and in case it attacks. Okay. Because daylight's not concentration, and keeping that up is just basically keeping it in sight. That's the only thing I can Okay. Um, are you going to hold your action or anything like that, or just waiting, just watching? Uh, yeah, I'll just 
hold. Um, so if it attacks, I'll attack it back with the, my green whip, but that's about it. Okay. Uh, Sai, just coming with you then? Yep. Okay. Um, it is back around to its turn. Uh, it... Make another persuasion check. I probably would have had you do it at the end there anyways, uh, Sarah, for kind of holding your hand out towards it. And what you said. Okay. Um, it looks down at your hand and you see it, like it's still snarling, but you see it sniff the air with, you know, kind of one nostril as the other one's kind of clawed open and scarred. Um, and then immediately swings around and jaw still open, just tries to, to just bite square into around the neck of Samson. Um, uh, which misses, uh, but that would potentially trigger both Sarah and Artemis' turns. He did try to make an attack, so if you're going to uh, use your reaction to to attack him, go right ahead. Uh, he does try to bite Samson a second time, which also misses. Roll a two on both of those. I'm not, because I said I was going to hold it if he attacked me. Oh, okay. So. All right. Um, that does hit uh, Artemis, so go ahead and roll the, the damage on that. Um, but you see the whip flap, uh, uh, kind of, kind of snipe through the, uh, uh, actually it was within 20, ah, that's fine. It's, it's just barely outside of the, it's within the long range, not the shorter range, uh, for it. Um, but the, the kind of green, uh, tongue part of it basically tries to snap out and, and, and slash at it to try to, to feed, to try to bite it. Um, and it just passes through and comes on back. Uh, the, the, the whip did, you know, still slow slightly as it passed through him, but the, uh, necrotic damage would not, because he's not a fleshy oh. target. Um, then, so he tries to, to bite uh, uh, Samson with both attacks, and then you see him uh, burst into to shadow again, disappears for a brief second as it uh, reappears behind Norok. And that's it for its turn. It is Norok's turn. <laughs> okay. I am... I will... Do I have... Oh, um, yes. sorry. With this last... I only missed on those attacks anyways. Um, he looks to have grown slightly. Um, at the at the beginning... Basically, as he turned to, to go to bite Samson, he actually looks like he grew a little bit. Um, which, you know, for his size already is quite a bit. He, he looks even more ferocious and dangerous now. Okay. I am going to um, just use my turn to actually uh, light up a torch in my hand, so that way I can have some extra light. And then I am going to just hold my action if I can, and then um, just hit him if he tries to hit me, or if he tries to hit Sarah again. Okay. Uh, I can. Remember, so. if you use your reaction, though, you won't get all three swings. You know that, right? Okay. So you just would get one, basically. But basically, you're using your action to... Um, to uh, your free action, rather, to your uh, item interaction, to light a torch and hold that. But your your action is to ready it, which means it'll be your reaction to swing. Meaning your reaction would be just like an opportunity attack. It wouldn't be it wouldn't be three swings. It would just be one. Okay. Gonna do that. Yeah. All right. Is that if your turn then, not backing away or anything. No, because I'm assuming he'll try to chomp on me. But just in case, I'm gonna wait and see. So yeah, just in case he tries to hit me or Sarah, and I'll just wait where I am. So. Okay. Uh, Samson, uh, looking over his shoulder and seeing this thing kind of just keeps coming like this, uh, he shouts, uh, retreat, and he starts to back away. He is going to take an opportunity attack, uh, which definitely hits, uh, whoops, for 37. That's not good. Um... He is still on his feet. Uh, that was a uh, the, the as Samson starts to, to back away, kind of holding his uh, his greatsword over his shoulder, getting ready to swing again. Um, the hound just bites into his left elbow uh, and just like covers the entire arm, almost uh, similar to how it was on on Sarah. Who uh, is that? You guys, Ben? Yeah, I was yeah. Um, uh, Samson does you know manage to back away, but took a, a really nasty bite. Um, it's it's. It looks a lot more dangerous than it did previously. It is Sarah's turn. Oh, 
there isn't enough space in between the hound and Nora to get in between them, is there? No. Right, He's tall gonna... enough you could kind of be like under his head, mm -hmm. but not not safely. Like if it moves his head down, you're you're basically one one bite and you're gone. It would just swallow you. I'm just gonna stand there and I'm taking my glove off. Can I touch it? Like, does my hand feel solid when I touch him? Make an attack roll with no target. Uh, so just a d20? Yeah, just roll a d20, I guess, and then whatever your dexterity modifier would be, and your proficiency. Uh, so, so 12 plus, plus three. 3 plus your uh, uh, proficiency is another 3, right? Yeah. So 18 total. Um, you reach out and, and it, you're touching a solid dog. Like it's for sure a giant, very, uh, very heavy mastiff. All right, I'm just gonna hold my hand on him and just kind of like at him and just tell him to stop attacking and just, I don't know, I guess try to calm him. Okay. Um, uh, that sounds awful, but yeah. <laughs> you, you've already tried two persuasion checks, so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna have you roll another one. But it does not seem to be calming. It still seems very angry and very dangerous. And looks like it's about is to it, take a big nasty bite out of Norark. Does it seem to understand like what I'm saying? Based oh. on your previous roll, it doesn't seem to. You can't tell for sure. It did. It, the only thing it reacted to at all. Like, even for you guys as attacking it, the only thing you've seen any reaction other than, than just kind of this, this unbridled fury is when you held your hand out towards it. He sniffed in the air and then turned and didn't bite you. He bit Samson instead. All right. I'm going to then, I guess, if it's not going to do any good, I'm just going to stab him with my shadow knife then. Uh, okay. Um... Your action was, eh, you know what, I would say that that would just be a free action, that it wasn't really an attack, just as much of a trying to touch him or not. Uh, so go ahead. Uh, you're going to cast Shadow Knife and put it up? Yeah. Which is a bonus action to cast? Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. wait. How bright is it? Right by him? It's, it, the whole area is daylight. Oh, well, then that needs to come off then. Because it's not advantage then. What part? Oh, you, okay, the effect, okay. Uh, you can actually take those off yourself. So in the combat tracker, uh, you see that little little axe head to the right of it? Uh, yep. Uh, when you click that, then you'll see the little red circle, so so delete the one for Shadow Knife Advantage. There you go. Yeah. Alrighty. Uh, since I'm right next to him, it's just a stab, right? Yeah, so it would be the, click the, the, the attack button to the right of cast, where it's melee plus six. When you have him targeted, or just drop it on him, either one. You see what I'm talking about? Yeah. Okay. Uh, it misses anyway. Yep. You see the knife pass into him, like in inside of the, the shadow, but the shadow just kind of swirls up around it as if it doesn't touch him. Alrighty. Um, how far was that? Uh, if I 30, I'm just going to go down here. It does not respond to you. It did. It like ignored you that you tried to move. Uh, Artemis' turn. I'm really not sure what to do. Actually, Samson shouted for you guys to retreat and started to back away. Yeah, I don't really have anything to attack it with, so I'm just gonna move away. Okay. Are there's gonna... not much I can do gonna... on it. I'm okay. gonna leave daylight up. Um, I will do is move that there. Move your spirit back. Okay. That up for your turn. Yep. Okay. Um, hang on. I need to check something real quick. Uh, can you move daylight once you cast it? You can. You cast it in an area, not an object, right? Uh. Spreads out from I point can you choose. cast it on an object, or I could cast it so it says, if you choose a point on an object you're holding, or one that isn't being worn, or okay, carries the light it. shines from the object and moves with it, completely covering the affected object with an opaque object such as a bowl or helm blocks. Okay, cool. All right. Uh, but you did cast it on the area, though, right? You didn't cast it on yes. a movable object? I casted okay. it on an area. Okay. 
All right, that's what I was looking for. Is that it for your turn? Fox? Uh, yeah, that ends my turn. Okay. How about Sai? She just moves back with me. Okay. Um, the hound then um, uh, erupts into shadow again, uh, disappears. Norok, you hear a growling sound coming from behind you uh, and feel two paws uh, connect with your back. Make a uh, strength, uh, yeah, strength save, sorry, and beat an 18. I think you have it. I think you get advantage automatically because of rage. Yeah, you do. Cool. Uh, well, you still, you still didn't succeed, though. Uh, it comes uh, careening into your back with, with both paws pushing your shoulders down until your face first into the mud. Uh, it is going to, now that you're knocked prone, it has advantage on this. It is going to bite you twice. Uh, hang on, I clicked it twice, not advantage. Or attempt to bite you anyways with you knocked into the, into the mud. Uh, 421, which hits. For 25 damage, which you take half for your rage, uh, and then is going to bite you a second time, uh, just just taking chunks out of your shoulder uh, with your face under the mud. Uh, for 21, which also hits. Uh, for a total of 25 damage again, so so well 25 and a half twice, so take 24 total. Uh, damage that he's just tore a, a huge chunk, one out of each shoulder, as he's snarling uh, over you. He steps off of you, but he's still basically directly above you. He's just got just two massive paws on either side of your head uh, as he's growling and, and snarling. You are prone uh, mm -hmm. and kind of beneath this dog uh, as he's standing over you. Over it, his head is basically over you. Um, you well, if you're going to stand, it, I won't put the effect on because that would take half of your movement. But what are you doing? Um, yeah, I am going to get up first. Uh, since he knocked me over, would I still get the attack that I held my action for? Or would that not be valid since I got knocked over? Um, he did attack you, actually. So, yeah, you would still have your, your torch, like your ready to action. Yeah, you actually still would. Because it was before your turn came back around. So go ahead. Okay. That would have technically been on his turn, you know, before I ended his turn. So yeah, okay, that hits. Go ahead and roll the damage. Um, are you... Well, you're holding a torch in one hand, and that great axe is two-handed. Okay, um, then can I, uh, I, I can reroll it if I need to, but I'll whack him with the torch instead since it's in my hand still. Um, so. Okay, that would be an improvised weapon. We'll just use the same attack roll as fine. Uh, the modifier okay. wouldn't be as big, but uh, that would still hit because you rolled a 19 anyway. So even with a, without your proficiency of 3, it would be a 19 plus 4. Uh, you, it's, you still would have hit, so uh, go ahead and roll. Um, I have a hand next 1d6 motion. That'd be yeah, that'll be fine. It won't be it won't be slashing damage. It actually wouldn't yeah. be it would actually wouldn't even be that high. It'd probably be more like a D4 uh, with some okay. potential burning damage if it if it were to impact. But go ahead and uh, uh, go ahead and roll the hand axe, and I'll just subtract two off. Well, that's not fair either. Roll a D4, and we'll just add four to it. Yeah. All right. So for a total of seven. All right, you guys. If if this was hurting it, you don't, again don't know what is and what isn't. But if this was hurting it, you've done 139 damage to it so far. Uh, that if your turn? Oh no, sorry. That that now that was that attack. So now it is your actual turn. Yeah. Now uh, and so that when I whacked him with the torch, the same effects, just kind of slowed a little bit, and that was it. Didn't seem to correct. Yeah. React. It, it, it felt like you were kind of pushing your torch into water a little bit. Okay. Then I'm going to uh, stand up and throw the torch over to the side to where it's still next to him, but so I can grab my axe again. Okay. So. Yeah, that's what I'll do. Uh, hits. Uh, 23 damage. It's a good roll. You're going to go all three swings, I assume, right? Yeah. Okay. I'll try to hold it off and see if everybody actually starts to run like Samson did. I want to talk to Samson. Uh, 
No. Natural one. Uh, no, fu- no special fumble. Just uh, you okay. can swing it through, and your axe gets stuck into the into the mud. Um, yeah, no, no special effect. So just go ahead and make your your next attack. It, it it failed on the special table, so I won't I won't you know have it do anything else. Uh, that misses. Dang. So yeah. you, where you you kind of the, the axe comes, it just goes square through its head, of course, and then sinks into the mud. And when you try to yank it free uh, and and you know make a half-hearted attempt to swing it back up, it just swings its head out of the way. Uh, Samson uh, shouts again that that uh, he says, "I'll I'll hold it off, run," and steps towards it and tries to. Although you've seen his attacks be less than effective so far, uh, and again he misses. Um, uh, in that uh, attempt there. Uh, it is Sarah's turn. Okay. Both Norok and Sarah are pretty bloodied up, like pretty covered, uh, you know, have, have uh, you know, a lot of blood-soaked skin at the moment. Artemy hasn't been bit yet. Samson is badly injured. Alright, I'm going to... cast slow. Okay. Uh, you can choose targets, right? Even though it's an area, but you don't have to automatically affect specific targets? Yeah. Yeah, it's targets at my choice. Okay. I need to drop Dragon's Breath, because that's concentration. Right there. Uh, Oops. Sarah, or, uh, uh Fox, uh, you keep track of your spell slots too, right? Yep. Okay. That's level three. Yeah. What just happened? Um, it has to make a what a wisdom save. Uh, cast, yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, <laughs> uh, you. Uh, uh, you you pull out of a, out of your component pouch a small uh, uh, drop of, of this sticky molasses uh, and kind of sw- uh, rub it between your hand and your stump, I guess, <laughs> you know, or your, your, what, what, where your shadowy hand should be, I guess, um, and then kind of kind of blow across it towards the the hound there, um, and you can't tell immediately if it took effect because it's just kind of swirling. It doesn't seem to uh, have immediately taken hold. Uh, I will tell you that he did fail the save, uh, but the impact is um, some of the features of it, I, I will tell you that some of the features of it can't affect him. Uh, but it, it does It does look like it did take hold. Alright, so should I drop the effect on him? Or yeah, go not? ahead and drop the effect on him. Okay. Because the part of it at least will affect him, um, but another part won't, so... All right, he has slow on him, good. Um, and he... Uh, when does he get to... Uh, a wisdom save at the end of its turn on a success, the effect ends. Okay, cool. Yeah, uh, I'm going to use the healing, ring of healing surges. Okay. And as a bonus action, so that'll take two of that. So give me one. Nope, not 31. One. And just use one of my hit die. On yourself? Okay. Yeah. Alright, go ahead. That if your turn then? I'm moving. Okay. Right. Uh, you did start your turn inside of the healing spirit as well, so Fox, would you roll that for her? I already did. Oh, okay. The Thanks. Five. Uh, oh, yeah, I see it now. Thanks. Okay. Uh, Artemis' turn. I rolled another one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you did. Awesome. <laughs> It's funny how often you guys get natural ones. Like, it doesn't really happen in the other campaigns. Okay. I'm probably just bad luck. <laughs> it's all Fox's fault. Just backing away. Nothing else for me. Yeah. There's not really anything else I could do because I don't know what's actually wounding it. Okay. Um, your your daylight does seem to be having a significant effect, though, because at least before that, it's been, you know, it's been... Uh, 20 seconds. This fight's been going on for... No, I'm sorry. Uh, 30 seconds now. Uh, total that this fight's been going on. And the first uh, 12-ish of that, he was able to stay invisible. Uh, and so far, he does not seem to be with your with your daylight kind of covering the area. Uh, but keep in mind where you casted it. It's not too far north of here. It would be outside this, the radius of that daylight. Uh, that if your turn? Yep. Okay. Uh, also, nothing side doing? 
Okay. Um, the hound is going to... I think probably it stays... I think initially it stays there uh, and just tries to, to bite uh, Norok again. Norok, you stood up, so it's not advantage this time. Um, oh, shit, I should have had been making you guys make the other saves for when it's trying to bite you, but uh, uh, regular... Why did he have advantage there? Am I still prone, Jack? Well, I never put the prone effect on you. Oh, you no. because of reckless. No, because you use reckless. Oh, that's why. yeah. 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 Uh, which hits, though. Uh, for 27, cut in half for 13. And second attack tries to bite you again. Uh, which still hits an 18. I'll do my tribal endurance on this one. Okay. Uh, for 32 cut in half to 3. Uh, no. Yeah, Never you mind. went unconscious with that. Um, can you use the endurance before that? Is is it at the before the attack or the end of the attack? When you take damage, you can use your reaction to be 12. Okay. Um, I would say that you can do it as soon as you took damage before the before being knocked unconscious from the first bite. So okay. we would just say that you took it on you chose to use it from the first bite. Uh, go ahead and do that, and if it's enough to uh, you took 16. How much did you have before you went unconscious? I don't know. I didn't see. It. All right. Uh, the first one was. That's fine. Um, we'll just we'll, we'll we'll you know say that you used it after the first bite. The first bite was 13. Uh, meaning you would have had one point above that. Um, the second bite, you took 16 total. So uh, you've got 14 left. It would probably be right about there. So basically, the the, the second bite. Um, uh, he just chomps down hard into you to basically through the middle of your chest over your shoulder. Um, but you're definitely uh, badly wounded by this anyways. Uh, you kind of shrugged off almost the second one with your tribal endurance because you rolled really well. You rolled a max 12 out of it. Um, but that's, you know, it's not looking good for, for you or for anybody potentially. Uh, he is uh, disappears again and reappears right next to Artemis. It before he moved, true. before he moved, could I do the extra attack, the reaction attack? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry for your, for your tribal one. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Okay. There you go. There he is. Okay. Uh, hits. Okay. All right, um, and that uh, now it's your turn, anyways. So your turn. He's he's teleported away uh, and is now standing over, like with his with his mouth basically right at uh, uh right over Artemis' head. Okay. Samson is still shouting mm -hmm. that we need to run. So he's still got two attacks even with slow? Yes. Okay. I'm going over here and gonna yeah, let the little people to let's get out of here. So and then I am going to um, I guess I will just since I can't reach him anyway. Um I'll just ready my action, so if he does get close enough to me, I'll whack him, so. Okay. And then otherwise I'm just going to try to get everybody out of there. All right. He only has one of those. Um... Yeah, that won't work. Uh, let's see. What would he do? He's probably still just shouting that we need to get out of here. Uh, and he's, he just yells that the, the beast isn't stopping. We need to run. Uh, and he is too far away for that. Um, you see him... Um, what's the component for that? Okay, there isn't one. 
Um, you see him uh, hold out one hand, uh, still holding the kind of kind of throwing his greatsword up over his right shoulder with with his right arm, and then holds his left hand out, uh, gauntleted. Um, and you see a kind of a glowing blue flame uh, uh, appear over the over the hound, uh, which he fails. Um, uh, and this this kind of glowing uh, blue fire kind of encircles the the, the shadowy. Uh, uh, hound and is kind of wrapping around it. Um, it seems like the smoke burned away slightly, but it doesn't, you know, you can't really tell uh, just because it just fills itself right back out again. Um, and Samson kind of runs uh, over the bodies uh, on the battlefield here. Uh, you can go 30, so we can only make it to about here um, and is trying to usher you guys to, to, to run. And basically, he's he's motioning off to the north, which is out of the battlefield and towards Dunscathak, which is an hour away if you were running. Uh, in fact, actually, 24 hours previous to this, you were all running towards Dunscathak anyways uh, when the battle ended, uh, when you were being chased by the by the Vabian Legion. Uh, that is it for his turn, Sarah's turn. You still have your Shadow Knife up? Oh, yeah, Shadow Knife and Slow actually still up. So. Oh, shit, I didn't have him try to roll his uh, Wisdom save at the end of his turn anyways. Let me see. Uh, his Wisdom's not great anyway. Uh, natural 1, so never mind. Slow's still on him. All right, I I know I'm gonna regret this later. I'm going to cast chaos. Oh. Okay. Uh, that hits. Um, as the what what uh, flavor is that bolt? Uh, it's the five, right? So lightning. Okay. Um, as the the bolt kind of just flings out of your right hand or what, where your right hand should be anyway. Um, you can almost feel the shadow spot growing on your arm like you're very conscious of it now of course um and it's it, it's very rapidly making its way down to halfway through between your elbow and your wrist any bonus actions no, uh you did start your turn in the healing spirit so fox if you would okay right. 10, 10, 10, 10, 30 i'm going up there hey max heal uh, it ignored you as you were running from it. It did not try to attack you. Is that it for your turn? Yeah. Okay. Artemis' turn. This giant hound is directly above you. If it was a real, you know, physical hound, it would be dripping slobber on you. Its big jaws are basically right over your head. I see that. If you were in our balance campaign, you would throw Psy in its mouth and then run. <laughs> wow, so mean. Uh, they, were, they were pretty mean to, uh, to Peter's uh, familiar. Um, I'm going to try and hit it with... Uh, my... Hit it with what? Okay. Okay. What was the blue for? Oh, it's save. Yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, it failed. Okay, um, the, you you send out this uh, uh, kind of gleaming white uh, spear of ice that, that shatters into its chest and then erupts, just exploding all of these particles around. Uh, you will hit yourself with the um, with the shrapnel of it as well. Okay. Uh, but your healing sp well with the <laughs> shit. Yeah, my healing yeah, your healing spirit healing. went down from the from the uh, just being surprised by the kind of ice crystals that that uh, uh, jabbed into you, um, dealing five damage to you. Okay, uh, but it actually it does seem like you can actually see these tiny little crystalline uh, shards sticking out of it, uh, like that the, something actually stuck into it. It almost seems. Um, it is going to take an opportunity attack, though, when you try to escape. Yeah. Uh, for an 18, which hits. Uh, well, you didn't get hit too much, so hopefully this isn't too bad. 25. Uh, a very heavy bite, um, just kind of up, almost like through your shoulder and almost over your neck. Uh, just a pretty, pretty gory uh, uh, bleeding wound. Uh, side moved with you, of course. 
Yeah. Uh, it is the Hound's turn. Um, it is seeing Norok is closest, going to uh, disappear and then uh, reappear in the air directly above Norok and try to knock you down. Uh, G, make a um, uh, make a uh, strength save. Advantage from your rage, of course. This is part of the attack, so. Uh, 23, you succeeded, so he doesn't knock you down, but where he appears above you, kind of falling out of the out of the air above, um, uh, kind of lands beside you and is going to bite you with a natural 20. Uh, you can imagine this is going to go bad. You got a natural 20, and it's 66 plus 6 for... 69 damage. He bit you almost as almost as bad as the uh, as your best hit on him earlier was. Uh, he can't disappear. He's going to run over you and try to to uh, bite at Samson with the second attack for 19, which hits. Oh, uh, hang on, I didn't roll the the right one. Okay. Um, Samson looks pretty wounded as well, uh, but is still up um, and is still shouting. Uh, it is your turn, G. It is death save time. I think this is the first time Norx had to roll a death save. Do you know how, G? Do you remember? Mm, no. I see the spot to mark him off. Uh, so to the left of that on, on your main, main tab, page. where the little red yeah. die icon is, click that and it'll roll it for you. Ah. Uh, that is success. That is the minimum for success. It's literally 10 and up. Uh, but when you went unconscious, your rage did fall, of course. Okay. Uh, but you will still have the exhaustion effects now, too. So that is potentially going to suck. Uh, do, do me a favor. Hit the uh, waning uh, waning frenzy thing. Uh, you're oh, unconscious yes. anyways, but, you know, assuming you, you know, are woken back up. Uh, which Samson is beside you, sees that you uh, just got kind of torn open by this, uh, spins his way around the uh, the hound and is, and is kind of still holding his, his greatsword up over his right shoulder, reaches down with his left hand to uh, cast uh, Cure Wounds on you. He'll cast it at 5, which is his max. Uh, actually, no, he already used his max, he can't. Um, the only one uses 3. All right, so it'll be, hang on, it'll be 3d8 total. Uh, for a, healing you for a total of 14. Uh, your eyes snap open as you're kind of like, laying flat in the mud again. Uh, face covered in mud. Now your back is covered in mud because you've been knocked over twice into the into the mud here. Uh, but but woken up um, with the, the hound kind of still standing over you basically and snapping at Samson uh, as he kind of he's, he's kind of grabbing your shoulder trying to help you up. You're too heavy for it, especially with one arm. Um, but he's telling you to get up and we need to run. Sarah's turn. Great. So I'm gonna run up to Morag. And I'm going to use my the last charge on my ring of healing surges, so I have to touch him. Okay. And he gets to use one hit die. Uh, you used two already, GB. You still have your three others, right? Yeah, you still have three more. Okay. So you can use another hit die, G. You, you oh. use your own hit die. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, you do it. She's just allowing you to do it with her ring. Uh huh. Good roll though. Cool. All your all your hit die rolls are really good, and your tribal fury or tribal uh, endurance was good. And since the dog is so much taller than me, I'm just gonna try and get like in between him and Norak as best I can. Okay. He still seems to be ignoring you, basically. Yeah. All right. Heart of my turn. Okay. It looks like the ice knife actually hurt it. There are still little bits of ice stuck in him. Okay. But he doesn't seem to be that. slowed, like, at all. You guys, total damage would have been 199, and he doesn't seem to care at all. It doesn't seem to be affecting him. Oh, you still have your inspiration, too, Fox. Yeah. I'm just going to use move backwards and put healing spirit up. Okay. Where are you putting it? I'm gonna put it near Norok for now. Okay. And then oh, I'll put the token move back on. it after. Yeah. 
Like there? Or yeah. like there, touching them? Yep. Okay, then if your turn. Yep. Alright, go ahead and put the concentration back up for uh, for that too. Um, the hound uh, turns over, looks kind of, kind of, oh, he's basically standing over Sarah, um, looks towards uh, Samson and disappears again um, and reappears kind of 20 feet away and goes charging square at Samson uh, to try to bite him. Oh, shit. Got lucky that time. Uh, he goes charging over over Samson, basically, and Samson ends up just, just ducking down because he's so big since he grew. Um, he just ducks down, and the hound goes just barreling over him and, and ends up kind of overshooting it. He's too, he's too far away. Uh, he spins his way around here, um, but that's he's going to end his turn, basically, just off the side of the map, basically, you know, just, just outside of the range. Uh, and it is Norok's turn. Okay. Uh, Samson shouts, we, we can't survive this much longer, we need to run. And you guys are my... you guys are getting near the edge of the radius of that daylight spell too, by the way. Am I uh, in melee range for him still? No. Okay. And I'm going to... He shouts to you, we're, we're not we're not hurting it, we need to run. I think you have forty feet now, don't you? Yeah. And since I'm not going to be able to do much else anyway, I'm going to dash, but I'm not going to go all the way out. I'm just going to go a little bit further and then yell at everybody else to get the hell out of there. So. Okay. Uh, Samson spins around, uh, <laughs> trying to kind of hold it off uh, and is shouting to everybody else to do the same. He, he doesn't engage. He's trying to kind of keep some distance. Uh, you know what? He does... You know what? Um, I think actually he reaches over and is trying to kind of... Uh, put his arm around Sarah's waist and pick you up. Are you resisting or are you letting him? Uh, I'm just gonna tell him to run because it doesn't give a shit about me. <laughs> Make a persuasion check. Uh, he shouts, well, I'm not leaving you behind, and he's trying to, like, he's basically either, either he's going to try to pick you up, and you resist, or, or, you know, and he'll basically stay there trying to, 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 to pull you, or you go along with him, you know, meaning on your turn, he's basically trying to get you to come with him. I'll just go. Okay. Um, then he, he kind of, since he sees that you're not resisting but willing to move, he just, you know, sits you back down and is holding his, his, uh, his greatsword ready to swing, uh, and is going to, uh, make his way up here but close enough that he feels like you can kind of get behind him. Um, you know what, what we'll do... Um, I think we'll probably handle it a bit like chase mechanics at this point then. Uh, we're, we're near the edge of the map, just don't worry about the map for now because we're kind of you know, going to run out of range of it here shortly, it seems like. Um, but that's it. Uh, you're still wounded. Actually, at, when he reached down to, to, to kind of put his arm around your, your waist to try to pick you up, uh, he did use cure wounds, but he only has level twos left, so... Cast that at you for four extra healing for you. It's your turn. Okay. Uh, knowing what it is, what mm, do I think it would be able to see through a darkness spell? You like, imagine it probably would. I mean, that you can, and you know that the reason that you can, you would assume that it probably can as well. That it is specifically a creature of shadow, it would probably be able to do so even better than you can. Shitty. All right, um, then I'm just gonna run. Okay. Uh, uh, gonna dash. Yeah, just as far as I can. Okay. But if your turn. Uh, yeah. Should Norg a field on his turn? Uh, he did actually start him. Yeah. Uh. Actually, both of you would. Uh, uh, Fox, do you mind rolling the heal for both Sarah and Nora? Oh, right. Since they were both in there. Yeah. Nice. Little extra for both. All right. Um, the uh, well, with you guys kind of turning and running, what is what is Artemis doing? Probably gonna go with them, but I'm also gonna move my spear with my thud. Okay. Can you? What's? How far can you move it? Can you move it? You know, 60 feet every turn. I think so. Okay. 
All right. Then with that, you guys oh, kind of 30. thirty feet every turn. Okay, so you can't. It can't keep up with you if you're dashing every turn. But it's up to you if you're gonna dash or just kind of you know kind of go normal pace. Uh, probably normal, because no matter what we do, it probably catch up. Um, for the daylight, I don't think I can move it onto something else. I'd have to recast it, right? Correct. Are you gonna do that? Yeah, I'll recast it onto my orb and stuff. Okay. It'll follow us around. You are Artemy herself is technically opaque. So it's you're kind of creating this massive shadow with it on your waist. Are you gonna you know hold it out above your head or anything like that? Uh, yeah, I'd hold it. Okay. Um, you do of course see that the the, the shadow hound is kind of still solid. Ah. It's, it, even as you're kind of leaving this radius, it stays. Um, it, it doesn't seem like it's able to disappear as you're trying to run from it. Uh, that if your turn then. Yeah. All right, so daylight now coming out of the orb. You guys all kind of turning and running uh, uh, to the north side, keeping up with you. Uh, the hound is chasing behind. It's going to be... Um, it... Well... Okay. Oh, actually, it, it, this would be the next time I'd have a chance to... to okay. So I'll tell it to you this way. Um, you... Uh, oh, shit. Like, if I tell this to you, this is meta-knowledge. Your characters can't act on this, but act in a way that is reasonable to assume. Basically, act, act in a reasonable way. Your characters don't know this. The players do. With slow on it, it can't keep up with you. It, it, its speed is 25. Normally it's 50. Its speed is halved down to 25. Meaning it can't keep up with you unless it dashes. If you guys are dashing, you can very quickly outpace it, but it does mean that it then is no longer in the daylight if you guys outpace it by that 60-foot radius. You, you understand where I'm going with this? So you'll be able to run faster than it, but it could disappear and then teleport in front of you and attack you, or so on. But you wouldn't necessarily know that the slow is... Because th the fight was all relatively close quarters, you wouldn't necessarily know that it's actually being slowed or not. Uh, I think. D uh, Becky, does it tell you if you know if the slow affects it or not? Let's see. Some spells tell you that you know when a spell took effect or not. Oh. It doesn't say. Okay, then you wouldn't know, because basically the ones that, that do, you it'll tell you for sure. Um, like uh, Zone of Truth and things like that. Uh, so you wouldn't necessarily know, but you know, maybe maybe you're just hoping that this might work and that you guys can can GTFO, because this thing is definitely yeah. chasing up close behind you. Because I would know what slow does, so I would probably tell them that I hope it worked. <laughs> as you, just, you can't you're, catch us <laughs> with your with your one whole hand. You're crossing your fingers and running as fast as you can. Yes. <laughs> All right. Um, this thing is chasing around behind you as fast as it can. Um, you know, you, you hear its kind of slavering jaws and look back behind you as it's nearing the edge of the daylight, uh, the, the radius of daylight. Um, like it's, it's, you know, it's, it's... Huh? Can I yell at Artemis to ask her if she can recast daylight onto something that's with us when we're running? She did. She did. Okay. Yeah, she I cast did. it. Yeah, she casted it on the orb that she's carrying and is holding it above her head, so that you have a sixty-foot radius around you guys, basically, that it can't, you know, can't uh, be invisible inside of, except for teleporting. Okay. Yeah, she she did that on her last turn. Um, the hound chasing after you, he's he's going to try to make his uh, his save on slow here. He's not very wise, but if he rolls high enough, that could go badly. Um. You still hear it chasing behind you. It doesn't seem to be closing ground. Uh, Norok's turn. Are you just running? You're doing anything else? I would be running and concentrating on running, but I would be keeping pace with the ladies, with the little people. Okay. So if they were going slower, I'd stay within the speed. Of the okay. Yeah, I was going to say because your, your speed. On running. Okay, because your speed is no. forty. You you would be able to outpace normally, but if you're keeping pace with them, that's good. Okay. I'm not getting more, no more than like you know five ten away from them. So okay. whatever they do, I do basically. Okay. So, but I am concentrating on running, though, to be fair to them. Okay. Uh, Samson. Um, for his turn, he can't really do much else. He can do daylight as well, but. If you already have it up, it's, there's no point in stacking. It doesn't do anything different. Uh, he is 
Uh, similarly, he actually kind of slows himself down to get Artemis and Sarah in front of him, so that he's, he's running to, you know, Greatsword still over his shoulder, um, but, you know, looking over his shoulder as best he can and kind of keeping everybody else in front of him as much as he can, uh, and is continuing to run. Uh, Sarah, recognizing that time is still passing, and you probably only have another uh, 36 seconds of slow being up. Uh, right. Then I'm going and to you have, go like, out. And you have another 55 minutes of running before you make it back to Dunstab Bay. I'm pulling out the rod. Okay. And, oh god, do I want to. Oh, wait. What does that do? Oh, dang it, that's damage. Never mind. Um... Yeah. Do I still have my sending stone? Um, the one to talk to Pepperjack? Yeah. I don't think I ever made you guys give that back, so you presumably still have it. You got 25 Rocky. words you want to speak? Yeah, the Rocky Talkie. The, the, the <gasps> kind of limited one, the 25 word one. Okay. Um, <laughs> Were you counting words? Is that what that was? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Okay. Yeah. What, are you, what are you sending? So, need help. Shadow hound chasing us. Need fast exit now. Making our way back to Dunstan. Okay. And that's it. I'm done. Okay. Um, there, you're still running. Uh, we'll, we'll say that you know that's the end of your turn. Actually. Um, you uh, just remind me that, that you'll get you know get a response because it take you don't get an immediately response it takes a second usually you wouldn't do that in the middle of combat so you know you might have a few seconds before before the reply comes Artemis turn uh, well first of all I'm gonna heal myself and everybody else is in range of the spirit and, okay. uh, I would say that you're all running through it anyway, so you just you move it in front of the whole train of you guys, yeah. and you all just kind of run through it as you're going. So go ahead and apply it to anybody. Samson, Norok, and you are all injured. Sarah's fully healed at the moment. Uh, I don't see Samson on the map. Um, he's in the combat tracker. He is actually right below you on the map. He's right here. There you go. Oh, okay. He's just really dark. He just blended into the yeah, map. Yeah, exactly, yeah. This, I didn't do a good job on this map. I had to make it myself. You can tell by how shitty it is with all the dead bodies and stuff on it. I think I got everyone. You did. And good rolls, too, actually. Uh, five, four, and four. Or, uh, four or five and five. Okay. okay. Uh, you move your spirit and run through it. Are you dashing for your turn? you do anything else or just, just running? No, I'm not dashing. I'm just moving it up in front of us. And okay. Then... Alright, coming back around to the Hound, uh, it is... Uh, hang on, let me do the math. Oh, sorry. Sorry, Fox. <laughs> uh, let's see. Five. If it dashed... Well, I could use it as a bonus action instead. Um, you see it running at you know at, at full bore, or just you know much taller than all of you. It's you know like a like watching a T Rex, you know a dog shaped T Rex uh, uh, chase after you through this this uh, kind of glowing uh, radius around you of uh, uh, of light, um, and it's like it it's it seems like it was able to kind of gain ground on you guys a little bit, but still not able to get in range. It's probably about 15, 20 feet back uh, right now. And then you guys were, you know, are still moving moving forward, of course. Um, but he, it did seem like he was able to gain some ground. Um, if he actually still could, he would be able to uh, potentially teleport and bite somebody. Um, he is going to make his save against the slow. Which failed again. He got a 9, so no success there. Uh, Norok's turn. Oh, sorry, by, by now, actually. But, uh, you know what, go ahead, Norok. And then when it comes back to Sarah's turn, she'll have a response. Okay. Uh, same thing. Just, you know, running and trying to stay within range of the little... Okay. Um, Samson, similarly, just doing the same. He, he's kind of, you know, when you guys look over your shoulder towards the sound, you're looking over, over Samson's shoulders as well, because um, he's behind all of you. 
uh, Sarah, the it, it took a second, and you hear a groggy uh, sounding uh, response uh, that says "copy sending help," and that's it. It's actually short and short and and, uh, and uh, to the point. Um, but like you you heard motion, like it groggy says that, and then there's motion, uh, like you hear stirring movement um, uh, coming through the sending stone. Like you might, you probably woke him up, and he was getting up out of bed. Okay. Uh, how much longer does Soul have? Uh, you have 30 seconds left. Okay, then however long it takes us to go, just um, when I feel like Slow's gonna stop or end, I'm going to use the rod and cast Slow again. Use the, the charges that are in the rod right now? Yeah, use three of the charges. Okay, yeah, there's five in it right now, right? Yep, okay. Um, you still have one extra third level spell slot as it is. Oh, no, I just, I'm out of third level. Oh. I just have it up there, because otherwise it takes away my third oh, level slot. Oh, I see, I see, okay. But you only cast oh. it slow once, though. What did you use for yeah. your other third? Oh, did you upcast I, something? Yeah, I used uh, False Life at third level. That's right, okay, okay. There I see go. what you did. Okay, cool. I, You know, it really, there needs to be... Oh, okay, you have... Yeah, if you change it to standard, then you'd be able to see it as opposed to combat. You know that? Yeah, I just did that. Sorry. Okay. All right. No, you're fine. I just I, I was thinking like there's got to be a better way to do that, and that's what that better way is, I guess. Okay. Um, but I mean, you were keeping track of it anyway, so it's all fine. All right. So in that case, then are are you guys going to change what you're doing at all? Or are you just all dashing, kind of getting as fast as you can, Norak still keeping pace um, until kind of slow runs out, and then Sarah's going to retry? Is that what you're going to try? What I'm doing. Norak and Artemis, are you guys going to be doing anything else, or just basically running as fast as you can? I'm just gonna be healing and going. And running, as okay. I can. Um, then there's going to be five. Well, actually, this is the end of that turn for Sarah. So there's actually, uh, all right. There will be five more times of you guys being able to run through the healing spirit. If you want to roll, just here. What we'll do, Fox, just roll it uh, without having a target. Mm -hmm. uh, just roll five d six, Fox. Just pick up a d6 and then right click four times until you have five of them standing up. Okay. Like Alright, so, yeah, just like that. So we'll just, we'll, we'll have you healing 18, uh, which would be Norak fully healed. Uh, Samson helped a lot. He's, he's still badly injured, but not as bad. Uh, and then you're down to only seven. So basically, Norak's fully healed. Samson's still wounded. You're still a little bit wounded. Uh, but basically, as you guys just kind of keep running through this spirit over and over and over again, um, he is going to get that number of saves, potentially. Uh, but his wisdom is really low. He's just a dog. So uh, let's see. Uh, failure. Failure. Uh, hang on. What's what's your DC? Or what's your, your save, Becky? Uh, whatever my spell okay. Hold on, wait, doesn't say. Your spell save DC, it'll be... Uh, hang on, where is the... It's 14. So he actually got a 13, so he, I, I thought he, I thought yours was 13. Uh, you see, actually, if you hit the magnifying glass... Uh... To the right of slow. Glass. To the right of uh, slow. Uh, oh, DC 14, okay. Yep. So that's your spell save DC is going to be 14 for all of your spells. It's just wisdom is this particular save that he needed to make, but he just barely failed. Uh, hang on, that was three. Uh, they rolled a seven, so that won't do. And a 19. Oh. <laughs> the very last one, he finally succeeds uh, with, you know, 30 seconds into it. Um, but you feel the effect drop because your concentration drops when the effect ends on him. Uh, because he was the only one affected by it. So you feel it drop. Uh, I would say that you have, uh, you can't cast it as a reaction, but we'll just say that it's, you know, back around to your turn. Uh, so you can recast, but, you know, whether you succeed or not could be particularly important. So go ahead oh, and yeah. cast. So you're going to use the rod to cast it. You're holding it in one hand, using the charges from it. Uh, go ahead and cast the spell, and, and let's see if he saves or not. He rolled a five plus one for a total of six. Did not beat your 14. He is back under the effects of slow. You got really lucky there. Here, I'm gonna grab it. Wait, hang on. It's it's back on him. It's not still. It's again. Here, I'm gonna show you guys the. Oh no! I just meant. Do I need to put the effect on him again? Oh no! It's still on him. That's but... fine. 
Here. This is what you guys got. You guys got really fucking lucky. <laughs> you see that? The last save is the one that's good for you. Well, it's, it's all good for you guys that he rolled low, but the very last one is the one that he... Second to last is the one that he succeeded on that dropped it. So, anyway. Um, nice. Alright, so you guys uh, are rushing as fast as you can. It continues to get further and further behind because it can't keep pace with you, uh, with you guys dashing, and it slowed. Um, so it's it's getting further and further behind, um, and eventually, uh, ten ten minutes in, it takes a long time. Your slow has already fallen off again, uh, but ten minutes in, um, it's it's kind of a relatively wide open plane, but you're far enough away that you can't tell whether he's disappeared again or he's just too far away that he's kind of blending in with the shadows. Uh, but you don't hear it, him, him, you know, slavering anymore. Um, and and five minutes after that, uh, you see uh, two horses in the distance rushing towards you with torches above their heads. Uh, coming south from Dunskathak. You can see Skathak in the distance, um, uh, but you see them kind of rushing out towards you uh, with bows ready and and, uh, and torches over their heads. Um, and as soon as they get within, uh, you know, within, within shouting distance, um, they shout, uh, uh, where is it, where is it? What do you guys do? Somewhere behind us, we think. <laughs> oh, that isn't the right one. But that, that's okay, it'll do. Um... But so so they go riding past you, um, and as you guys kind of run past them, and they're they're like full bore going as fast as they can. Uh, you see, both of them are in full uh, full plate, like they're 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 heavily geared for this. They were probably guards that uh, that they just threw on horses and had run out. Um, but they go kind of blazing past you as you guys are rushing as fast as you can back towards Dunskathak. Um, and you see two more uh, rushing out that are on horses as well. Uh, the, both of these robed, uh, like in in, uh, in less, or let's say not armored garb, basically. Um, both looking very tired that are rushing out towards you. Uh, and as they get in the distance, um, uh, they shout down towards the, the group of you, uh, do you have any wounded? Do you have any wounded? I think you're muted, G. Just Samson. I think the rest of us were healed, right? Uh, Artemis is slightly wounded, but uh, but Samson does. Uh, he's kind of breathing heavy because he is in full plate. I think he's he's heavily armored. Um, but uh, uh, shouts up to them, um, and they do approach. And he uh, uh, kind of reaches up as best he can to try to hop up onto the back of the horse. Uh, it's not a very large horse, and it seems to be certainly slowed. Uh, but he's kind of leaned over, um, and seeming like he's he's pretty well exhausted. He actually used all of his all of his spell slots to heal you guys. Um, and they, they kind of spin and, and start to, to ride him off. Artemis, are you hopping on another horse or are you just continuing the run? You're not as badly wounded, of course. Oh, uh, I'm fine. I'll just walk the way to rush the way back. Okay. All right, you guys rush the, the, the rest of the way back in. Um, it is, at this point, probably about 1.15 a.m. or so. Uh, pretty early, of course. Most of the camp is asleep, but there's still a lot of construction going on. Um, I mean, it's still, you know, the, the camp is all there and and uh you know in in use basically but most of the refugees are certainly in fact actually you didn't see this happen too much because you guys were sleeping at the time um but a lot of the refugees have been moved into uh into the subterrain as well as the you guys see the infirmary has been taken down completely and other structures are being kind of built up in its place you don't know what they're for necessarily but the uh uh the, the camp is you know construction still going on but relatively quiet compared to you know during the day um, but you guys have arrived back at camp, um, and you are still alive. What are you guys doing? Uh, I'll be right back. Okay. I'd probably finish healing up, though, and I don't... Okay. Well, we should probably go see Pepper Jack since we already woke him up. Um, you, looking towards his tent, you see the, the light is off, the, the lantern that he normally has on. It's not on right now. We don't see him anywhere? No. And you don't see Samson either. Samson was ridden in with a horse, of course. I mean, there's plenty of guards and stuff around. You just don't see Pepper Jack. There's plenty of, you know, crawl blinders that are kind of acting as guard. Uh, up to you guys. You want to go find Pepper Jack or just go to bed? <laughs> Uh, the guards, when you guys rode through, seeing you kind of... The wounds are healed, but you guys are covered in blood. Um, when you rode through, uh, the guards say, Are you... are you wounded? 
Not anymore. Um, he shouts, in case you hadn't seen, the infirmary is down below. If you, if you need their help. Just leave another jacket down there, I guess. Okay, here you go. Oh, I said we could go see if Pepper Jack is down there. Yeah, and then if not, we'll go see if they need any help down there. Yeah. Okay. Um, you guys make your way. Okay. You guys make your way towards the the same entrance you guys used initially when you went into the subterrain, um, and it is packed. Like there's people all around the outside. Like there, there you see um, a lot of soldiers that are kind of leaned up against that um, mausoleum-shaped building. Um, just you know, it's not mud anymore. It's you know had time to dry a little bit. Uh, but basically sitting on the ground, leaned up against that and smoking. Um, you know, there's, it's pretty heavy uh, uh, cigar smoke around the, the, the little building itself. Um, but they, you know, outside as soon as you've approached, um, they kind of look up at you guys and, and squint a little bit. Um, and, and one of them, uh, looking up at you, kind of chewing on a cigar, says, uh, was, there, was there fighting? Are you guys, you guys all right? Yeah, well, my ally, thanks to you guys' help, but uh, that was definitely an interesting situation. He looks at he looks at his friend, the one that spoke to you. He looks over at his friend, uh, looks back up. He says, "I I don't think I did anything. I mean, we, we've been kind of just sitting here, you know, trying to recuperate for a bit. But uh, I mean, thanks for your thanks, I guess." You guys heading in? Yeah. Okay. Um, as soon as you stepped kind of down the, the first set of stairs um, towards that first little antechamber area, uh, kind of where you guys found the whip, almost basically around the corner from there. Um, you see Samson is, is there with one of the healers that uh, had thrown him over, one of the ones that was on the horses. Um, and uh, uh, he looks up and, and sees you. He says, oh, good. Uh, it's good to see that you guys made it. Um, I don't know that there's you know, much much we can do at the moment, but at least that thing, if it were to try to, to come in here, is going to have a lot more to contend with than just the, the four of us. What is that thing? Do you, do you know what that was? Why did it attack? I'm not saying anything because I don't know if he heard me talking to it, and I'm just going to kind of, like, stand behind Norok <laughs> as best I can. When that happened, Artemis was behind you, like, over your right shoulder. Uh, Norok was nearby on the other side of it. Uh, where was Samson? Was he off to your right a little bit, like, by Norok? I think, I think he, was... he was out of hearing range. I think um... he was towards the butt end of the dog. Okay. Um, in the midst of, especially with it growling and kind of slavering and everything, it probably, he probably wouldn't have, one, like, seen that you were talking to it and maybe didn't know what it was you were, you know, even refer even if he did hear, he probably, I would say they probably didn't understand it anyway, um, just because the, the, the kind of hectic nature of, of a, you know, giant beast in a fight like that. Um, I would say they're just giving you the benefit of the doubt, you probably, you know, it, it probably, he probably didn't overhear in that particular sense, so, um... Uh, is Artemis doing anything? You guys basically they, they've uh, headed down into the uh, where the infirmary is in the subterranean you guys cleared out. Okay. Uh, I'd probably try to see if they cleared out where we had marked that we haven't explored. There are people everywhere um, including in the, the doors or the doors that you guys didn't open previously are open now and there's people all over the place. Most of it's pretty well cleaned up. You see uh, wooden support beams that have been put into places where the, where the ceilings had collapsed. Um, and it's, you know, largely cleaned up. In fact, a lot of the rocks, uh, when you guys first came down, you saw a lot of the, the kind of uh, debris that was filling the place is outside, uh, or, you know, surrounding this little, little mausoleum thing um, on the surface. Uh, but basically, it, it looks cleaned out, as far as you can tell. Oh. Wounded are everywhere. Um, you see refugees that even aren't wounded uh, are down here as well. It seems like they've kind of sectioned off the first part when you first come in for the wounded, and then the uh, off to the sides where you guys, the areas you guys hadn't been to previously, um, is where the children and the elderly are and things like that, the non-combat uh, refugees. Okay. Um, but Samson, after you uh, aren't, aren't saying anything, he asks, well, he's, he asks, do you guys know what that thing was, why it attacked us? And Sarah didn't say anything, she just rugged in behind uh, Norok. Did I say I had no idea? I just turned around and saw a big giant dog, so... Um, then with, uh, you know what, he's, he doesn't, uh, well, shit, go ahead and make a persuasion check on Norok. Okay, because that actually is the truth, though. Yeah, Norok wouldn't know, that's, that's so. what I'm saying, like, yeah. Norok wouldn't know, but I'm just curious whether he would, 
uh, have reason to uh, distrust Norok's answer, whether he's telling the truth or not. That's why I said I didn't tell you to roll a uh, d uh, deception, but persuasion. Yeah. Okay. okay. Um, because of your disadvantage, because of being uh, you know tired uh, from the from the rage, um, you didn't roll as well. You actually dropped a nineteen, but uh, okay. but you you can't read. It doesn't seem like he disbelieved you. Um, I gotta ask though too. In the last session, uh, the interaction that he had with the with the, the ghost of Scatter, the High Mage, um, what are Norok, Sarah, and Artemis' kind of feelings about what they saw there? Do you remember what he said and what happened with the with the ghost? He kept asking where the ship or something was, and then said uh, something about you should have listened to our. Um, our offer. Yeah. Or offer or something. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We actually heard those words, right? That was, that was actually what the characters heard. Okay. That's what that's what uh, Samson was saying. You guys' roles were too low for you to be able to hear what the ghost was saying, so you only heard half of the conversation, basically. Um, but you heard Samson ask about, uh, where's the ship? Where's the box? Um, uh, hang on, I'll just find the actual questions. Um, but basically he asked... Um, do to do uh, where's the box first? And then he says, then where's the ship? And then he says, then on the ship, where's the box? What's the password to unlock it? And then he said, and this was a very rude response. Like, it definitely sounded very rude and very angry. It said, how do you like being dead, Scatter? Uh, you think maybe you should have listened to our offer instead. That's what he said. So you guys don't need to tell me necessarily how Norok, Sarah, and Artemis, uh, uh, feel about that interaction, but uh, that will come up. So just keep that in mind of, of what your guys' uh, your character's thoughts might be when Samson is here wounded, basically, uh, asking you what this hound was, and so on. Um, so anyways, after after saying that, though, um, he says, uh, I mean, we I need to get this to, to, to Pepper Jack, so as soon as these guys are done patching me up, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go find him, but, uh, I mean, unless you guys have anything else you need to do, you know, it might be a good time to, to get some shot eye if you, if you can. I'm a little hyped up myself. I'm going to try and find somebody who has a needle and thread before I go to sleep. Okay. Um, where? Just any of the women that are around or any of the nurses or anything? Okay. All right. I was going to say that, that uh, the soldiers probably wouldn't, but the nurses, you know, the, the healers probably would. Um, healer is not necessarily all magical, of course, but just, you know, healer in the sense of like a doctor, uh, nurses, etc. Um, the, the, the first one you ask ignores you. Um, she's still kind of leaned over and, and trying to, to uh, work on somebody who's got a broken leg and she's trying to set the, the wound. Um, but you find another one, though, uh, another healer that he's dressed in a, like a full smock all the way down to the floor, just covered in blood. Um, and you guess he might be a surgeon of some kind, maybe. Um, you know, for, for what that's worth, you know, when it comes to, to not medieval, but let's say dark age, uh, <laughs> medicine. Um, but you, you ask him, uh, and he kind of squints at you and then he doesn't say anything. He just kind of reaches into the, into the front pocket of it. Um, and he kind of yanks his hand out and kind of swings it for a second. Like he might've jabbed a finger on it, uh, on a needle. And then he brings it back out and he's got a needle and a small spool that he just hands you and kind of turns away and, and is immediately, you know, like ignoring you and back to work. You guys, you guys want to go head back up on the wall? Or find some place down here to sleep? It's a clear night. It is cold, but it's clear. The sky's clear. Uh, the, the black moon is full, uh, and the red and blue, there's a crescent of both, so there's a little bit of light. It's on. Yeah, might as well go back up. Okay. Um, you guys are climbing back up on the wall to get some sleep? Yeah, while we're there, I'm going to sew my gloves to my shirt sleeve. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, I, I see what you're... Okay, now you're going... Are you going, like, full length with it, or are you going to sew it to where the stump would be? Uh, like, where the end of my sleeve is, I'm assuming it would be, like, where my wrist is. Yeah, so exactly. It would sewing... be totally normal. Yeah, just so it looks okay. like it's there, so I can use Mage Hand to, like, puff it out. <laughs> okay, that's what I was going to ask next, actually, if you were just going to kind of fill it with Mage Hand, because it, then if there's empty space between, it wouldn't matter. Like, it would just, you know, the sleeve might hang a little bit, but it wouldn't look as uh, suspicious. Okay. Um, all right, in that case, then, you um, uh, make a sleight of hand. Uh, dexterity check plus proficiency. 
Alright, and while this is happening, I guess I will explain to Morak and Artemis everything that I know and what's been going on. Because apparently they deserve to know if they're going to get eaten, so... <laughs> Um, out of curiosity, then, did Nor would Norok and Artemy have noticed that after it, like it, it initially was just going straight at Sarah, and then at some point kind of ignored her and, st and stopped paying attention to her and started trying to eat you guys? Would, would um, you guys have? Kind of... So with with that, then maybe the question came up, and, and maybe that's where Sarah explained it to you to Norok and Sarah. You think, or Norok and Artemy? Yeah, probably. And, you know, them seeing me sew my glove on my shirt. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, now, I know I put it together, but did we ever figure out if Sarah put it together where the eye came from in her dream? It's funny you mentioned that, and we'll get to that here in a second. <laughs> but, okay. uh, but whether Sarah ever did, I don't remember. I, I, know, I know you figured it out, but I don't remember if Sarah ever did. You know what, though? There will be an opportunity for her to realize that very shortly anyways, let's say. So not to, to spoil things, I guess, but uh, I mean, you guys are pretty much going to arrest anyways. You do anything else, you guys just kind of, kind of, well, I guess first, do Norok and Artemy have any questions for Sarah after what she's explained? And did Sarah tell them about the eye? Uh, well, never mind. Sarah wouldn't, if, if she didn't know that yet, then she probably wouldn't have mentioned that part, or maybe she did, but not where it came from. Just that I had a dream about nine. He mentioned sending hounds after his hounds after. Me. Okay. Okay, not really. Um, I don't really have any questions at the moment. How about Norok? Uh, no. Nah, he's just so tired and you know, died and exhausted and everything. So. He's he didn't, he didn't die, but that's, right that's the first time that norak has gone unconscious, that's for sure. Yeah, he's actually mad, too, because he hasn't been bested yet like that. So, Well, uh, in a while. Masetsu. You know. Masetsu so. definitely bet you. Yeah, you okay, well, well, yeah, that, too. He was pissed about that one, too. <laughs> yeah. So, my, so, so yeah, really I'm not mad. The fight. Yeah, I'm, I'm not so much, well, I haven't going to have questions for Sarah. I'm not so much mad at Sarah. I'm just mad at the situation because I lost. So I'm just going to be grumpy and fucking go to sleep. Okay. All right. Then in that case, um, the are you guys taking a, a watch? Uh, yeah, I would take a watch and work on sleight of hand while I do it a bit. Okay. Um, Just like with the coin. Yeah. Let me go to my my notes for that real quick. For Artime, there we are. Uh, you had one success so far in episode twelve, session twelve. Uh, go ahead and make your your uh, sleight of hand roll. Another success. Okay, uh, you keep kind of dancing the coin over your over the backs of your fingers, practicing that. Um, uh, Sarah tra or, uh, was fixing the glove to her wrist. Are you guys doing anything else for the rest, or just just sleep? As far as your your watch times and everything. Okay. I'd probably go out and check the traps I had set? Or? Um, if yours was going... If you were doing the watch first, it'd still pretty, be pretty dark out, but, uh, okay. Um, we'll say that you, you go out and check the traps, though. Uh, you had placed them probably only like six hours or so before. Kind of basically when you guys finished your rest and, and uh, Sarah had been... Yeah. Um, you know, you guys basically slept all day and then did a whole bunch of... Uh, identification kind of hanging around camp and stuff for a few hours and then went out to go do this um and then came back and, and you know well i had to went out while she was identifying stuff i went yeah. out while she was doing that yeah that's what i mean so basically after you guys had woken up you went out and, and uh, set the trap so it's been probably six or maybe eight hours or so at this point um but the the um the larger traps you don't see um they don't seem to be disturbed at all uh but the smaller rabbit traps uh, all of them have been sprung uh, most of the smaller game is, uh, you know, kind of a little bit um, panicked, I guess, at all of the uh, noise and, and chaos in the area with uh, Dunskathak being built out when they used to be in there. Basically, they used to live under these rocks and things like that that you guys are sleeping on. So they've been kind of forced out almost, 
and of course in so doing they don't have their normal food habitat so they've moved out and, and uh, you know ended up getting themselves trapped so uh, you end up with with uh, uh, three good sized rabbits okay I bring them with me and reset the trap okay okay so you set those back up and come back um, Sarah as soon as you lay down to, to try to get some sleep um, first uh, you, you lay down and you kind of set your bag off. Obviously, you don't have your bag you know, over your back. Um, uh, but when you lay your bag down, um, the broom, you, you kind of hear some stirring behind you and you look over and you see the broom is wiggling itself back and forth trying to get it out of the, trying to get it out of the straps. It's still stuck between the straps of your backpack and it's trying to move itself out of it. Um. I probably don't want to piss it off because you said it seems sentient, right? It seems sentient? Yeah, it, it seems to have a personality. I'd take it out. Okay. Um, as soon as you've pulled it out of it, uh, out of the straps, it kind of, it, it stops, it stops kind of wiggling itself back and forth. Um, and then you, when you let it go, it's still kind of floating there for a second. You lay it back down and then you feel it come up and try to wiggle its way under your arm like it's trying to cuddle. And then it lays still. Okay, I guess I'll cuddle with a broom. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, and then uh, Artemis, you you come back, nothing's disturbed. You just see that Sarah is cuddling the broom, which you know seems strange because the broom isn't moving now; it's just laying still. So it just looks like she's very attached to this broom. Um, but it basically everything seems fine. It would be the end of your watch. Okay. Um, was the like you were going out to go check traps? Are you actually taking a watch, or are you just going to lay down and go to sleep? Oh, uh, well, I'd clean out the rabbits first. Okay. All right. So you're, you're up for a little while doing that. Um, at some point while you are, uh, you know, cleaning the rabbits and, and uh, um, you know, kind of be, maybe beginning your trance or, you know, getting to the point where it's time for you to, to take your own kind of rest portion of it, um, Sarah, your eyes snap open uh, in, the, in the middle of, of the, in the night there, and everything is kind of that same shadowy uh, uh, surroundings that you saw um when you had that dream before um and it is, in fact i had the sound thing for it but it, i didn't load the right one so we'll just have the same annoying sounds in the background um anyways but your eyes snap open you you know what you're seeing is is this orconal reel it is the, the shadow reel um but you see that same uh glowing eye uh and this time the voice is not angry and the eyeball isn't isn't shifting around all over the place looking for you it's just this glowing uh, uh kind of eye-shaped orb um, that is just staring off in a fixed direction. It's not even looking at you. Like, it's not looking in your direction because you, you you know by now that it can't see you specifically where it is. Um, oh, shit, I guess Sarah probably hasn't put that together yet. I would say that she probably would have at this point. This is when you would recognize maybe that uh, that where that eye is coming from. Okay? All right. I know Artemis and, and Norok don't know that. Ben and Becky or Ben and uh, Fox don't know that either. But you know, like, Sarah would now recognize because you can look over and see that Artemis is sitting there and cleaning a rabbit. And it's in the eye is sitting by her feet, um, but it's staring off. It, it's it's not looking directly at you, but it's a little bit calmer this time, and it doesn't look like it's angry, or it doesn't sound like he's angry, um, and and not as uh, uh, aggressive. But what he says is, here. Artemis doesn't seem to be responding to you being awake. Like she doesn't seem to notice that you're awake, or that that eye is there. Or she doesn't hear this or anything else. All right, well, since she now knows where it's coming from, uh, she's going to sit up and try to get it out of the bag, I guess. When you get up and start to move, as soon as you do, the kind of shadowy striations, the smoky feeling that's all surrounding you disappears, and you're, you're basically just, it fades away, like the, the way that, um, uh, you know, if you wake up and rub your eyes, the kind of blurriness goes away, it's just like that. Um, and you're looking at, and Artemis now looks up at you, uh, you know, it's easy that you're awake. Uh, do you mind if I hold on to that scroll case that has that black orb in it? Not really. I'd grab it out of the bag after cleaning my... Okay. It, or just tell her to grab it out of the bag because I'm probably still cleaning the rabbit. Um, and I guess I will just 
take the next watch or whatever when Artemis is ready to go back to sleep, and I will keep it in my bag. Okay. Um, make an Arcana check on Sarah. Okay. Uh, hang on, I gotta make a quick note here. Oops, sorry. God damn it. <laughs> I can't help it, Fox. Mm -hmm. Well, at least this oil is now helping more, so it's not too bad. Is it? So you know, your headaches aren't as bad? Uh, the humidity is making them pretty bad, but uh. that's good. You're just putting it in your own backpack? Uh, while I'm awake, I'd probably hold on to it. Just the, the scroll, scroll case. case, not the herb. Okay, all right, okay. Yeah, yeah. All right, cool. Um, in that case, uh, this is unrelated to that particular part, but because your sleep was disturbed and you didn't go back to sleep, make a con save. You need to be to 14. All right. <laughs> Uh, you would have had exhaustion, so you got enough sleep in that uh, that you still managed to, to not be exhausted in the morning. Uh, is Norak doing... Uh, well, I guess is Norak going to take a watch? Because Artemis kind of at some point would be going into her trance and Sarah's just staying out the rest of the night. Is that it? Uh, yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, Major armor would fall. Obviously, Shadow Knife's down. Healing Spirit's down. Uh, I'll go ahead and apply the long rest as well. Uh, take off the exhaustion for Norok too. Okay. There you go. Alright, everybody fully healed and everything too. Um, Alright, so morning comes. Uh, you guys, especially on the kind of uh, elevated platform that you guys are on anyway, uh, you know, on this kind of broken rocky piece. Um, oh, let me turn off the birds. Well, no, we'll leave it for a second. It's good for the morning anyway. Um, all, all three of you uh, kind of just being a little bit sore maybe from the from the fight and, and you know not necessarily sleeping on the most comfortable uh, rocks uh, but kind of getting up stretching a little bit looking around um, you you notice that uh, one um, you know the camp is kind of a buzz again and, and construction is continuing uh, trying to shore up defenses and so on uh, you do see that pepperjack's tent the lantern is lit um, make perception checks all three of you uh, Artem may wake it with advantage Sai gives you a very big yawn, um, and has kind of uh, uh, crawled over your lap, and is keep kind of she's kind of sniffing at the air towards the rabbits that you cleaned. I'd give her some and cook the rest. Like you know that she doesn't need them, but but she's still sniffing at the air, like for sure at it. Why did Nork roll it with advantage? Oh, perception because of the sentinel. Nice. That'll be handy. Did you do that on purpose, Chief? Yeah. Okay. I hadn't even thought about it. I just saw the advantage and was trying to think of why. But, um, uh, Artemy, you're kind of distracted, uh, you know, and, and giving Sai some, some bits of rabbit. Um, you, you gave her some raw rabbit, and then you're cooking the rest for breakfast? Well, yeah, I'd make it a bit into a stew, because I would have gathered a few more things, like not just the rabbits. From... Okay. Um, then as you guys are kind of having your breakfast then of, of a rabbit stew, uh, Norok, you look to the south, um, you know, just the kind of the direction that you guys are facing anyway, uh, where your guys' rock is. Um, and there is a, a, a gleaming white stone mountain uh, that is kind of catching and reflecting the morning sunlight that's floating in the sky uh, far to the south, uh, above the, the Great Sand Sea. In fact, it's, it's south far enough that it's certainly over the border, back in the Vavian Domen. Um, it is one of the tiers of the moon. You guys know what those are, of course. But uh, I think I've told you what they are, right? Did I? These? Tricks from the moon. Uh, you saw one, Norok saw one when you guys came out of the pyramid, uh, when he came out originally. But there's the, the, the largest one, the one you've seen it a couple of times, it's basically just a big chunk that has been kind of around here. Uh, moved in an odd direction, I would say. You guys saw it to the south before, but it wasn't quite where it is now. Like, you would think that it would kind of follow a similar pattern, but it seems like it's moved a little bit oddly. Uh, it's not... It's, it, it, um, think of it like wind, basically. You'd expect wind to kind of push it a certain direction and continue along that pace just for momentum. Um, like an orbit would work, but it seems to have moved backwards somehow. Um, and it's that's, that you find that a little bit odd, uh, that that stands out a little bit. Uh, but that's it. It is morning time. You guys have uh, um, 
you know, whatever, whatever you choose to do with the day. What are you guys doing? I'm going to go over to the uh, forge area where the Oros was and see if they're over there. See if um, he's over there. Cool. Okay. Um, you head down there. I didn't load all the sounds that I needed, guys. So sorry for the sounds not being as, right. as on on the spot as usual, but. Uh, anyway, uh, you head over there though. Um, you don't see Doros, but you do see the other one. Do you remember his name, the Shaman? That you finally no, asked I his name not. last week. <laughs> I know I asked last week, and I cannot remember. What... <laughs> it's all right. His name is Gratis. Okay. Yes. There you go. Uh, but you do see him there. I'm gonna go in and say good morning to him and uh, ask him if he if uh, he knows that Doros had a chance to finish with the weapon that I gave him. Uh, his, his nostrils kind of flare, uh, and, he, and he gives you kind of a bowl-shaped smile. Uh, and he says, well, in fact he did, uh, and I, I think you'll be pretty happy with this thing. Uh, just come with me. And he kind of kind of shrugs his, his horns in a certain direction. I will. All right. Um, he takes you kind of around this, this tent flap, uh, where there is a, you see a wooden crate sitting out there, and there is a weapon sitting on top of it that is still like as soon as you even get close it feels hot like there's there's a radius a radiant uh, heat coming off of it still uh he says he, he just finished it uh it still needs you know a little bit of time to cool you're welcome to take it just you know maybe don't touch the metal so much uh unless you want to you know burn something but um uh really it's it's uh, it's quite a beauty um here you go i'm going to share you what it looks like there you go um, it's basically a big blunt hammer on one side and an axe blade on the other. Uh, you got that, right, G? Yep. Um, uh, but you pick it up. Um, it's it's weighted very very comfortably. Um, the stats of this thing are different now than what it was before. Uh, so I'll go ahead and give you the item. Let me drop down your inventory for you, uh, and I'll share you the share you the tab. Um, he said um, he says while Doros was working on this. Uh, he did notice, I think we'd mentioned this before, but he did notice that there is an inscription on here. Um, and it's not, you know, it's not the language of my people, but it is something that we've seen a few times with some older relics like this. Uh, and what it says, um, the inscription says... Uh, so first, Vulcanbrecher, where it said Vulcanbrecher before, that was on a part of it that had to be cut away. So the only inscription that's left is that. It says, all the lights are stars, and... Um, seek this guy. Okay, there. Cool. It says it just like that. And there is, um, there's a small mark that is like a, like almost encircling the first letters of that first part. So the, it's not A-T-L-A-S, but that's what it would translate to, which each, with each of them circled. Um, but that's what he what he kind of he points this out to you that that still remains on the uh, on the, the blunt end of the hammer because remember that the only metal of this thing that's left is the axe blade and the basically the head of this thing the handle is wooden now um, the, most of the metal had to be kind of burned away uh, but the item itself um, is now in your inventory uh, and here I'll drop it in. There you go. You guys all should be able to click it there. Ah. When you click that, does is it empty? Does it show anything? Nothing even popped up. I dropped it in the um it opened, in the chat but window. It's empty. It's empty. Okay. Ah. All right. Ah. Yes. Well, you see it in your inventory, right, G? Yeah. So you can read it if you want to there. There's no description on the button on my inventory. Really? Just the name on the top. You said you shared the image? I shared the image to Ben here. I'll, I'll just share the image to all of you. Okay, I'm just curious to see what it looks like. Sure. Uh, it is... There you go. See if you guys can click that. Yeah, you guys should be able to click that one. Okay. Yeah. There's the image, yep. All right. Okay. But as far as the stats of it... Hang on one second. Let me see if I can get that to... It should show up for you. Um, here, I'm gonna have to delete that version of it from your inventory, and I'll re-add it real quick, G. I keep trying to whistle.
All right, I added it back to your inventory, G. Um, there, it is identified now. So now you should be able to hopefully click it. Okay, let's try that. Can now? Can you see the steps now? Yep. All right. Basically, you can throw it. Um, it's it's slightly less damage than the greatsword version, but with the modifier, it comes out to being the same damage. Uh, basically, it's versus. So if you if you use it one-handed, but you can with the shield, of course. If you use it one-handed, it'd be a D8 plus two for a total of D10 or t for a total of up to ten damage with one swing. Um, but if you use it with two hands, which is versatile, so you can. If you use it two hands and swing with it, it'd be a D10 plus two for which would be the same damage as your as it, the greatsword version would be. But you can throw it if you choose to. Of course, if you throw it, you won't be able to make multiple swings. Uh, but it will. Um, it still has plus two bonus to attack and damage, so it's still slightly better anyway. Uh, but if you throw it, it does 1d4 extra lightning damage, and obviously you can hit something at a range, and then it'll fly back to your hand. Okay. And that is just immediately, there's no, that's not a bonus or a reaction? Correct, it just automatically does it. It just flies back to you, assuming that you want it to. You can you can throw it and leave it, yeah. but if you if you tell it to come back to you, it's a free action. Uh, okay. But uh, as Gratis is, is kind of uh, showing this to you and holding it by the haft, he's being careful not to touch the head of it, um, he says that this inscription here, though, this, this all the lights are stars thing, it, this there's still room inside this thing. The enchantment isn't finished, and it seems like it can still uh, be improved upon. So if you figure out how to do that, you know, find people capable of doing it, then this thing can can probably grow. Hmm, interesting. Uh, thank you very much. He and, um, He says he says I'm not great at enchantments myself, but I can tell you that this inscription is the key. This this is where it is. So if you can figure it out, if you can unlock this, um, and find the, the kind of you know the, the, the people with the the proper skill to be able to uh, you know, expand upon the enchantment that's already here, this thing could be a lot stronger than it still is. Okay, great. Um, I'm going to say thank you, and then also I'm going to uh, ask him if he knows when Doros is going to be around so I can come, up, come by and thank him personally. Uh, he says, well, he just went to, to, to rest after he finished this, so it'll probably be, you know, give him a few more hours and he'll be back in here working on uh, whatever other materials that the, the crow blinders need. Cool. Tell him. Boston, I'll be back later. He just nods. Sweet. So you have your new weapon that should be back on your actions tab now, I think. Yep, it is. Uh, Vulcan plus nine. That's ridiculous. You're going to be, like, never missing with that. Uh, if you... Re so remember how to use the one-handed versus two-handed thing, right? Just click on the hand, right? Yeah, so it's, it's one-handed right now. There you go. I just wanted to make sure that the 1d10 thing worked. So be 1d10 yeah, plus there six. You know, plus six one, damage yeah. for, for two-handed. Sweet. Uh, because you're modifiers. So, all right, uh, you head back to where Sarah and Artemis are up on the rock. What are you guys all doing? Should probably go see Pepper Frank. Probably. Okay. Um, you head down to the to the to his uh, tent. Um, he is in there by himself. Uh, as soon as you've opened the tent flap, uh, he kind of smiles up. He says, "He says they they told me that you guys made it back safe. I'm I'm glad to see. What what happened out there?" This big shadowy dog attacked us. I'm he not says, telling him either okay. exactly what happened. Um, make a deception check. He looks at you specifically, um, and he says... Huh, how would he... Okay. He says... That seems seems odd um, and, and a little interesting. I mean, Samson was pretty perturbed by it. He said that it seemed to have a, a taste for you specifically. Yeah, then it was really weird. It just left me alone. I don't know what happened. Must not have liked my taste. <laughs> Uh, he actually he chuckles a little bit and then he kind of sticks his lower lip out a little bit like he's you know just just okay he's just you know, ignoring it basically. You can't tell whether. Uh, hang on, actually, let me roll that. To see. Uh, no, you you can't tell whether he bought it or not, uh, whether he believes you or not. Um, but he says, "Well, I'm I'm just glad you guys made it back safe." Uh, Samson returned the the glyph that we needed that that Scatter was holding onto the sigil. Um, so that's that's you guys did well despite it being a, a dangerous outing. You, you guys came back and, and took what we needed. Uh, were you able to find any healing supplies? Uh, I forgot to ask what we found healing supplies wise. Um, and then we got attacked by dogs. I never finished my search, did I? 
Well, you the town attacked when you started to kind of look through the other bodies. So you didn't find much. I think... Didn't you guys find one before... There's just some herbs before you got to Scatter's Corpse? Oh, we were talking about it, but there was nothing specific. I okay. said if I was looking for, like, healing supplies and stuff like that, and you're like, you found a few things, but not much. I think I found, like, one healing potion, and then I was going to search the rest, but then we got attacked by the hounds, so... Okay. Um, yeah, we'll just say you guys found, you know, minimal stuff, basically, not not the kind of stuff they would need, uh, or not the amount of stuff they would need. Um, make perception checks, uh, Sarah and Artemy. Uh, probably Norok, too, actually. You, you had a full rest, so... I'd want to go back and get more supplies. Do you, does Artemy say that? Uh, probably. Just not sounding like... Okay. Uh... Norok, you look over at the mention of healing supplies. You look over um, based on an earlier conversation and uh, look for the bandage on his leg. Um, and you see that there's a it's a brand new wrap that's around his thigh. Um, and you don't see any blood on it. It doesn't look like it's, it's bled. But you can't tell if it's just because the bandage is so new and it hasn't had time to bleed through or if it's, you know, healed. But uh, with Sarah and Artemis, uh uh, roles there, you guys don't necessarily notice that unless you specifically would have remembered to ask him about it or, or specifically remembered to kind of look for that. But you didn't just notice it uh, by default, I guess is how I'd say that. Mm, I would have probably looked because if he's too badly wounded and can't bleed anymore, that would be an issue even if he thinks other people need it. But the question is whether you would think to look or not, you know. Yeah. Not necessarily whether you, because you didn't notice it accidentally, I guess is what I'm saying. Um, but if it were to come up because you guys' earlier conversation, that'd be one thing, because you guys did mention specifically that you would, or that he agreed to let you heal it if it was, uh, you know, if it was still uh, bothering in the yeah. next day. Yeah, so I would specifically ask it how it is again. Um, he looks down at his leg, uh, he, he notices Norok looking at it, and then you ask, and he looks down at his leg and looks back up at you. Um, he says, well, uh, the dental healers already, already forced me to let them use some of their talents, so it's, it's healing. I'll be fine. He says, save your, if you don't mind, save your skills for, uh, and your concern for my men and women who are still suffering down below. And I'd just add on that note, I would like to go back to see if we can't get any more supplies because our um, foraging got in trouble. And Samson really want to come back in a rush. He kind of he kind of nods. Um, he says... That's that's uh, certainly valiant, and, and we could probably use it. I mean, the, the primary thing that we need out of there is what Samson returned with, thankfully. But um, I may have other work for you guys shortly. Um, it it kind of depends on what you're, you know, how comfortable you are with this. But um, he says, I'll, I'll just get right down to it. He says, uh, Oh, by the way, I guess for for the for below, uh, the, the bridge has been repaired. Uh, the remaining denizens of the subterranean have been dealt with. Uh, the healers have moved the infirmary down, and the refugees that are not capable of picking up a sword have been given safe places to sleep, thanks to you. Um, so, you know, with your with your work, we were able to to get quite a bit done. Um, the the glyph pattern that uh, Mage Scatter, High Mage Scatter, held that that Samson brought back. Um, this will allow our mages to drop a teleportation circle that connects back to the capital, and with that, we can bring in some small reinforcements and supplies and another High Mage. Um, my plan was to bring a few High Mages through, actually, to, initially to try to summon the Crow Fort. Uh, but it seems that Scatter lost the artifact that when we were attacked at sea. Um, and he mentions the Crow Fort, and this is the second time he's mentioned it. He says specifically, he said, summon the Crow Fort. Um, which sounds certainly strange, but, um, you know, unless you guys had had a lot of time specifically in, in uh, military mage cadre circles, you probably wouldn't know what they're referring to. Um, but he kind of he kind of just glosses over it and keeps, keeps going, but... Uh, um, Basically, he says that. He says that uh, Scatter lost the, the artifact that they need when they were attacked at sea. Okay, so is that why Samson had a weird conversation with uh, the dis- He kind of tilts his head to the side a little bit. He says, weird conversation? What do you- what do you mean? Uh, well, he asked us to move away, and then we only heard, like, a bit of Samson's half of the conversation, and it kind of, like- I get we're not part of the organization, so there's some stuff that you'll keep, and with my background as, like a, simple terms, as a treasure hunter, clients don't always give the most information, but if the information that people keep from me put my life in danger, I will be upset. 
Let's just put it that way. He kind of squints. He says, I'm not sure I understand. Norok and Sarah, are you guys saying anything? I'm just going to say, Samson had some heated word. The, uh, I'm assuming, spirit of, of uh, the Admitted Mage. Oh. Heated words, like, can you guys give me, I don't understand what you're saying here. Um, from what we heard, he heatedly asked Scatter if he liked being dead, and then mentioned that he should have listened to an you cut out at the end there, Fox. Listen to what? Oh, do an offer? Instead? He says, uh, he looks... Hmm. Make persuasion check on Norok and Artemy. Okay. And then I'm gonna say he was inquiring about a box or something, too. When they said that, I want to be watching his face closely. To see what his reaction is. For which part, I guess. What, uh, what is it you're trying to see uh, reaction to? When she said, how do you like being dead, you should have listened to her father. I want to see what his reaction is to that. Make a, on Sarah alone, make a, pers uh, not persuasion, sorry, perception check. You saw his eyes narrow slightly. Like he, like, not squinting, but like, there, there was, it brought up a question in his mind, you're sure of that. He looked. He looked slightly puzzled. Um, he says, "Okay, hold on. I'm. I'm. I'm a little. I'm not confused. I guess. I'm. I'm. I'm trying to kind of put all this together." He asked High Mage Scatter if he liked being dead, and he was talking about a ship in a box. Yes. But you because see his, go ahead. like, um, he just mentioned that he lost an artifact. So I'm guessing that the artifact was in the box in the ship. Because he just said it, he lost an artifact while we were attacked at sea. So that question is technically answered through hypothesis, but it's... He says, I mean, I can, I can answer that right now. In fact, that's what I was going to ask you all about, but I'm, what's, what I'm concerned about... He, he says, pardon me, the interruption, lady. Just the, the part that concerns me is him asking about High Mage Scatter being happy that he's dead and not listening to an offer. He says, oh, that offer okay, so didn't come from you? He shakes his head. He says, in your your time out there, I know it wasn't much, and it sounds like a lot of it was, you know, in battle. Uh, did Samson act strangely anywhere else? This this seems very odd. This, this doesn't sound like, I haven't known Samson long, but, you know, what little I have, he's, he's been a loyal soldier. There was something else, but it's not anything substantial. It's more than it's more just like a feeling than anything else. What what kind of feeling? That he's just not being completely truthful about something. Like I know he meant what he said when he would heal us and make sure we got back here alive. But something just seemed off. I'll nod to what Sarah said there, because I don't have a note. He looks down at the table for a second. Um, he's kind of leaned over it, you know, like knuckles against the table. And then he, and then he looks back up and he says, I, I don't, I can't say that I'm, I'm comforted by what I'm hearing here, but I mean, I have to take the benefit of the doubt here. Lieutenant Sampson was, was transferred to the Crow Blinders only a few months back. Uh, but before that, he held an exemplary record amongst the 8th Army under High Fist Stanthos, and he came with a strong recommendation from that High Fist himself, even. Um, I, I may need to, to ask him about this, but I'm, I'm just I'm hoping, I guess, that maybe, you know, the wind out there was enough that, that uh, maybe you misheard him or something. So I'll, I'll question him about it. But um, in the meantime, the ship in the box that we're spoken of, that's, that's really kind of where we're at. Um, the, like I told you, that glyph pattern uh, will allow us to bring in the high mages, but without the the, the artifact that was that was lost at sea, it's really not going to do us any good to get the crow fort here. And 
Uh, all right, I'm, I'm just going to be I'm just going to be frank with you. After we received our orders to rescue the Vabian refugees, uh, we left port from the capital on two ships: the Crow's Eye, which is a fast frigate, and the Emperor of the Waves, which is a uh, a larger and slower brigantine filled with supplies. Um, these are the ones that he tells you. He tells you about these two ships. Okay. Um, uh, on route, we were attacked by a gargantuan sea creature on the Caliodoran. That's the name of the sea, by the way, is the Caliodoran. Um, the Emperor of the Waves was too slow to escape those tentacles. Uh, High Mage Scatter flew the, the crew and the remaining soldiers over to the Crow's Eye, but left behind some, some artifacts on, on the, uh, the Emperor of the Waves, uh, which is the, the slower ship. Um, he so says, is the ship sunk, or it was just attacked? Last we saw it, it was just scuttled. It was just attacked. It's, it probably was, I mean, it's a big boat. You know, the creature would have to be pretty gargantuan to be able to pull it down, but uh, at least at the time, it was just not safe enough, and we moved everybody over to the, uh, to the crow's eye so that we could get away fast enough. We lost a few soldiers, but not many. It was, the, the, the major concern wasn't that. It was, you know, the uh, things that were left behind not only are invaluable, but, but potentially dangerous if they're in the wrong hands. Okay, so it'd be a recovery mission on water. He kind of sighs, and he's, he's quiet for a second. He says, um, look, as you've mentioned, uh, you know, you're, you're not part of the organization, as you put it, uh, but you've been uh, valuable assets regardless. Um, hang on one second, guys. I've got to take care of something for work real quick. I'm still here. I'm just on my work laptop as well. That is done. All right. Um, he says, we are preparing here for the inevitable siege, as I'm sure you guys are aware. Uh, our scouts have been uh, reporting that the Vabian Legion, including the Albashar, uh, are regrouping, and they're just inside the Sand Sea. Uh, they could be here within a few days' march. Uh, as we are, we could only hope to hold out for a couple of weeks at best, uh, far less if the Legion brings some heavy Mortalist forces and breaches our walls. Um, he, he's referring to what Cogret was, like the ogres, the dead ogres. Um, those would basically break the walls down. Uh, he says, I shouldn't be trusting you with this information, but I feel I must. Um, if you are going to have a surviving chance at this, um, we're, we're going to need to be as open as possible with you uh, and the rest of the refugees. And since you're amongst the most capable, certainly, uh, of the refugees, I feel it kind of falls on your guys' shoulders. So um, Quill, the historian, of course, that, you know, you, you met Quill earlier, so you know who he's talking about. But Quill believes that Emperor Caius will order the Crowblinders to withdraw back across the border. And he kind of pauses for a second. And he says, without the refugees. So he's just going to leave them all here to die. He kind of, they're, they're, I would say that this is below your passive as far as an insight check. Um, it clearly bothers him a lot, but yeah, he's kind of, he's very uh, solemnly nodding. Um, you guys know that Simon Caius is the current emperor. Uh, the former emperor, Gal Caius, died two years previous. And then last year, Simon Caius, in a bid to try to kind of show that he's a strong emperor, because uh, he's very young and stupid, um, ordered the annexation of Aukus, which meant that Vabi doesn't have food, and then Vabi is now attacking the Empire because of that. So basically because he's a young and stupid kid, uh, you know, that led to this war. And, and now, now he sent people to try and rescue them, but because it's costing more an effort and he's not going to be able to send reinforcements, there's too many things going wrong, he doesn't actually know what to do, so he's going to try and retract the forces to lose less of his army to reinforce somewhere else. Pepperjack kind of kind of nods. He says, I, "I won't deign to try to understand his motivations. I mean, it could be that. It could be that he knows that the Vabian forces will uh, be amassed at the border before long and, and try to to take larger cities. They've already sacked a few small villages, as you guys are aware. Uh, hence the Albashar, um, which hasn't been done in hundreds of years. But you know, with with the major forces of the Vabian Legion attacking, he'll try to to make a defensible position, a defensible border. And Dunskathak is not that." But if the crow blinders, you know, my my, uh, my company, if we are there, we have a better chance, of course, of keeping more lives safe 
and he doesn't consider apparently that the refugees' lives, including yours, are as valuable as his own citizens. He says, Adawa Khan, who you guys recognize, that's the Vadian leader, that's the king of Vadi, uh, the Khan of Vadi is the title. He says, Adawa Khan won't stop his advance until he's taken enough of the farmland and the Reach to feed his people. Uh, which you guys do know, by the way, the Reach. Um, so, there. Basically, the just past the border, uh, just north of you guys, essentially, is an area called the Reach. Uh, which is all farmland, because uh, it's, you know, it's, uh, uh, it's good for farmland, basically. It's nice and wet, uh, but it's, you know, there's dry enough soil and healthy enough soil that they can continue to grow. And that's where um, where Aukus, the, the area that was just uh, the country that had been annexed, and Pale and Kedril. Uh, Kedis was from Pale, G. Um, and then Kedis and Ivar went through Kedril once in balance. Okay. But that's basically near the border, essentially, is what we're talking about here. Um, and that, since it's all rich farmland, you know, he's saying that, that the, the Khan at least won't stop until he's taken most of the reach to be able to feed his country with. You guys do know, by the way, that historically... Uh, what was Mist was previously called Vindi. They were friendly neighbors originally, but Vabi uh, was a militaristic society that grew soldiers in, in the desert uh, and became a military powerhouse where Vindi, which became Mist, grew money and became the strongest economy. So that's where this, this kind of this uh, problem has come from is that, you know, the money can buy more soldiers, but they can't grow food in Vabi. So basically it's either get the refugees past the, um, the reach. He or... shakes his head. He says, "He says that would be nice, but I don't, I don't see that being possible. Not in time, anyway." So then, what do we do to keep the pearl blenders here? Uh, there is a very subtle shrug. Like he doesn't have an answer for you. He says, "He says Quill tells me that Dunscathek was a great fortress back before the Empire." But in its current state, especially if I'm forced to withdraw my soldiers, this will mean certain death for all of you. He says, if, and this is a big if, but if we can get the Pro Fort summoned, you might have a chance. I mean, you'd have proper walls, the ability to bring in food and supplies. Uh, the Khan might just decide that it's an expensive siege that isn't worth the effort, and just to, just to wipe out a few thousand non-military refugees. So you could potentially just wait out the war here. He might just pass you by, go up north to the border, and then we can fight him there while you guys stay here in relative safely, uh, safety. Or, I mean, you know, if you chose, you could always trickle out here and there and just, you know, try to sneak out in small groups. But with the crow, to get the crow fort here, we'd need the box that High Mage Scatter left behind on the Empire er, Emperor of the Waves, which is somewhere adrift on the Caliodoran. And said, how far is the Caliodoran from here? It's two days' march to get to the coast. He says, and after speaking with Scatter, I mean, Lieutenant, Lieutenant Sampson knows best where to locate the ship. Um, I'm going to send him on a mission to retrieve the box. And considering the situation, and since you are the only ones that seem to be aware that he um, may have compromised loyalty, uh, I would very much appreciate it if you'd be willing to accompany him. Well, I don't really feel comfortable leaving him to go get it by himself, so I'll go. Yeah, I would have wanted to go grab more supplies first, but if you could spare anybody else to grab the supplies from the... The battlefield is a, an hour away. I mean, it's a couple of hour, a couple of day trip anyways. If you, you know, maybe you can convince him to, to do that. Uh, you know what? Actually, never mind. Erase that. What he says instead is, um, I sincerely appreciate your, your willingness and... and uh, uh, you know, concerned to do that. This mission to recover the box, though, it would be far more valuable. It's, it's saving all of your lives and hopefully some of my folks as well. So, mm -hmm. I mean... It, Which is why I suggested sending a few other people to go check the field. Yeah. He says, he says exactly. Uh, if, you, if you don't mind, I would like to trust you, uh, the three of you, with this very sensitive mission, and instead I can send some of my scouts to, to recover as much of the supplies from the battlefield as possible. Uh, so I'd mark with the bodies we kind of searched uh, where the dog attacked on the map, along with where I placed my traps, because I won't be able to check them for at least four days. Um, he looks at the map down, because he has a map of the area, um, and he says, okay, so you guys covered here, and he's kind of pointing at the map. You guys covered this general area, then, of the battlefield? Yeah, and then I'd mark, like, the few bodies we checked, and then say, like, there's a few more there. Um, I'd also say that it's pretty muddy and just not send anybody with a weak stomach, basically. 
<laughs> he kind of chuckles at that. Actually, he says, "He says, yeah, uh, that's uh, we in the Crow Blinders tend to uh, weed out the green recruits pretty early on." So, but I certainly appreciate the the feedback there. That's uh, that's un uh, an unfortunate uh, side effect of war is having to build a strong stomach. I'm just gonna look at him and tell him that since he is so honest and forthright with us. Um, I will tell him that he probably won't have to worry about the Shadow Hound while we're gone. But um, I, that is my story. That it, it, it's my problem to worry about. That's your problem. Okay. Uh, he squints one eye, like very suspiciously. Um, he says, I get the sense you don't want me to pry about this. I would prefer not to because. I don't quite understand everything yet anyways. He looks down at the at the, the table kind of between you guys are on one side and he's on the other. Kind of looks down at the table a little bit and he gives a single nod and then looks back up. He well, says, I so do you... Going to see. Do you... Yeah, if, if you guys, you know, if you're accepting this then, it does mean you will be leaving Dunscathic again. Of course, this is uh, out of narrative for a second. Um, it does mean you'll be leaving Dunscathic again for probably a week or so. You know, two, it'd be two days there, potentially sailing around for a while if you can find the ship. So he says that Samson can find it. You don't necessarily know how, but maybe because he recovered some of uh, Scatter's possessions, he might be able to, you know, track it down or something of that sort. You don't know. But basically, so he, it's, the, you, that's the impression you get probably, is that, that uh, Samson will have a means of finding the ship because of things that were left behind. Um, but... Uh, the, the idea is if you go with Samson, you'll be, you know, heading out to out to sea for potentially a little bit, you know, a few days maybe, and then coming back, back on the beachhead, and then, you know, a couple of days march back to Dunscathak. And remember, though, he did mention that they are expecting, you know, to be under siege soon. So you may come back to see Dunscathak surrounded. Um, I would ask if there's a better means of communication, um, or a faster, more direct means of communication we could bring along with. Um, he kind of looks to the left as if there's something, like a supply, you know, like he might be looking for something. He looks over to the left as if there's something there, but there isn't. Um, and then he looks back at you, he says, I'd, I'd like to give you the, the, the more, uh, advanced arcane versions of, um, you know, of our, of our sending stones but I'm afraid I just don't have a spare at the moment. Um, tell you what, if you, since you're willing to do this, I'll, I'll do my best. I'll see if I can take it from one of my officers that is going to be here with me anyway, um, and maybe we can just trade, because, you know, quicker communication would certainly be valuable uh, with the mission that you guys are going on. Um, so maybe we can trade, you give me back the, the, the kind of short version of it, um, and I'll give you the, the more advanced version if I can, you know, get that, get that handled. Does that sound okay? Sure. He kind of holds his hand out to Sarah. He said, I think it was your voice that I heard, right? In the middle of the night? Woke me up? Yep. I had it to him. Okay. <laughs> he, he takes it and he kind of smiles at you guys. So you said you guys fixed the bridge just in case we get back and there's, you know, oh, you right. guys are surrounded um, on this side. Do we know we where it comes out at? We haven't where it comes out at. I have a rough idea from the mapping, but that, yeah. He says, yeah, we, um, not only did we finish the bridge, but we finished reinforcing that tunnel as well, uh, and then covered up. Even if you knew where it was, you likely would have trouble finding it, because we did our best to camouflage the exit so that we can use it in an emergency. But that being said, this could very well be one of those emergencies when you guys return, so I will make sure that our scouts show you exactly the location so that if worse comes to worse, you guys come back and see the place is surrounded, you can still make your way in, and hopefully we can get the crow fort summoned inside here, um, and then, you know, work with the siege from there. Okay. You kind of nods, okay. Well then, soldiers, uh, I know that's kind of an informal, uh, but I, I certainly appreciate your, your efforts if you're uh, you know, willing to do so, then, then meet up with, with Samson. I'll make sure that the scouts show you on your way out. Uh, and good luck. Thank you. You guys head out? Mm -hmm. yeah. Alright. Yeah, we will go right. ahead and... Uh, what's that? Go ahead. Sorry, out of zone up part of the tent uh, last night, I just thought that, um, that I had grabbed material uh, to try and make it 
You did. It just clicked in. Yeah. So I would have started sewing it together, like, a bit after the rabbits before sleep. Okay. You had time. You had four hours. Yeah. You only need four hours of rest, so uh, we'll say that you got... Uh, make a... Just for simplicity's sake, make a dex uh, check, just a flat dex check, because you're not, you know, you're not proficient at making tents, so it's not going to be something you'd have a proficiency bonus on, but a dex check would be fine. Okay, you make one serviceable tent out of that. Um, you know, each time you rest, basically, you'll have time enough to try one more, unless you spend a couple hours during the day uh, making uh, another. Well, the thing is, I would probably have started with Sarah's, because it's smaller, just to, like, have an idea of how to do it, and then okay. did mine and then Norok's, <laughs> because once I have a better idea, I can make it... So, so Sarah gets the shoddy half-assed one of the, your first attempt that, you know, has a hole in the top that rain's going to come right through. <laughs> but, okay, but you can not make one for yourself bad. and then one for Norok. So okay. So <laughs> if it's too badly done, I I'm could always kidding. get more material and make a new uh, one. Especially, especially for Sarah's size, one hide that is thrown over a frame. So basically, you just have to build like a decent frame and then sew it to it. Uh, you're, you're able to pull it off just fine. And, and I would say that probably doing the first one, um, you learned enough about you know how to do it to to kind of improve and make it easier to make a second and third. Um, but hers is the easiest to make for sure because she's so small. So you make oh, it just yeah. yeah. So so you have uh, you know you've made a decent quality tent uh, that is Sarah size. And then you'll have the you know with with the next day or if you're going to choose to spend a couple hours you know you know stopping on the march or whatever to to do that, uh, then you can make more later. But um, you know or, or make two more before you guys camp the following night or something like that. So uh, as it is, um, unless you, do you guys have anything else you want to do before we call it for the day? No. So, uh, we do need to go through that book. We found a book, right? What book? In Scatter's things? Didn't we find a book in his bag? You found his spell book, yeah. Oh, yeah, I wanted to go through that. Artemay wouldn't be able to read very much of it. Um, it's going to be in, you know, in arcane runes and things like that, largely. So you probably wouldn't be able to read too much of it. Sarah doesn't have training. She has uh, who's proficiency or who has proficiency in Arcana? Norok definitely I, not. No. I think you. I think Sarah does. Sarah does. I don't. But yeah. I was going to try. I don't know how to work Arcana for like. How yeah, do you get proficiency in Arcana? Reading spell books, <laughs> basically. It's it's so spell reading spell scroll, books, like but that. I can't actually read it until I'm more proficient well, in Arcana. But you actually can a little bit. Well, okay. okay. So so it's basically you would be working with lower level spells, essentially, is where you would kind of work on that. But uh, you having your ritual spell book have an idea of how to do it. It's basically you can read small bits of it already. You're just not enough to be proficient in it. It takes you time to read okay. it. So that's where you're, where you're. In fact, you still have, by the way. Um, you guys have in the Bag of Holding, like, two spell scrolls, I think, that you haven't copied over yet. Uh, I mean, you'd need the materials and everything, but assuming that you were to get those materials, you could copy... You have, uh, Augury, I think is one of them, right? Uh, I'm not sure what they were. You I found a couple of spell looking... scrolls. Uh, well, they're, okay, there's... Yeah, Scroll of Augury and... So there's there's uh, the Ancient Scrolls of, of Teleportation, which you, you none of you would be able to understand. Those would be far too high. Those are those are ninth level spells. Uh, but the but Augury is definitely one low enough that you could copy into your spell, uh, your spell book and be... Oh, and a, oh yeah, Scroll of Augury and then the Ancient Scrolls. That's the two. Uh, but you could copy yeah. that into your book and, and be able to use that spell <laughs> as a ritual if you chose to. Okay, but I would need the special ink. You need the special ink and the... Actually, you already have the book, so the paper's already taken care of. You would just need the inks. Yeah. And then the time. Describe it over. Which those inks are the kinds of things that mages would have. So you know, if you were to find the supply, find uh, scatter supplies on the ship, that might be enough. Maybe oh, we'll roll for it to see if it shows up there. Well, but that's basically where you get is from mages. So. Um, oh, and we also wanted to see um, if we could get a mage that had um, information on necromantic stuff to try and help the girl trapped in the. Yeah, Elwyn. Um, well, not the cloak, but the jewel. Elwyn, yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, so uh, there are mages here. They're just not high mages. They're not basically they're not high enough level to understand it to to, yeah. be able to help you too he much said there. Once we got the other thing, I forgot to mention it to uh, Pepperjack. Once they got, because he said they could now get high mage. Yeah, with and the teleport. They just can't summon the. Yeah, with the yeah. teleport, they just can't summon the the um, crowbinder. Yep. 
So they'll be bringing one high mage in yet um, already to replace Scatter. You always basically have one. Uh, you know, basically, the, the commander of the mage cadre is, is a high mage. Uh, so the yeah. mages that are here are temporarily reporting to Pepperjack, but they should be reporting to a high mage, and the high mage will report to Pepperjack. So he's going to yeah. be bringing one in anyways, and that one potentially might be able to help you with that once you guys get back. Uh, if okay, I had also requested a book about it too, so I could learn about it, not just like. Cause that way, the high mage could do his own duties, and I could learn about it separately. Sure. Yeah, that would be something you would need to ask the, you know, them for whoever, whoever the high mage is that gets brought in. But there will be multiple here. If you guys can successfully pull this off, they'll teleport in multiple high mages because it takes it's it's a, a very high level spell for them to be able to pull off summoning the crow fort. And there's going to be a bunch of them here, essentially, while they finish that ritual. Uh, so you'd have the time around a bunch of them to hopefully either ask about Elwyn and or books to to learn about. It, so. Okay. Okay, then where we are leaving off here, uh, you guys will presumably be heading out to um, out to the coast with Samson. Uh, you know, go out to the coast, have a few laughs. It's a dumb joke from Die Hard. Yeah. <laughs> I actually haven't seen Die Hard. <laughs> so you didn't miss much. I mean, the movie's fine, but it was a stupid joke anyways. <laughs> There's when he when he's crawl I think it's when he's crawling through the air ducts, uh, the the AC ducts, and he says, "Come out to the coast, have a few laughs." A stupid joke. Um, anyway, so uh, so that's where we'll pick up next week. Um, let's see. It is the sixth. Everybody good for June sixth? I don't think that's a special day. Yeah. Oh, no, it's not. And it'd be July one day. Oh, sorry, July. Yeah. Because um. I know. Don't. Okay, so. <laughs> um, you guys, it's the fourth. For us, it's the first. So yeah, the sixth is. Your guys' Independence Day is July first. No, or Canada Day is July 1st. Well, so oh, I guess you're not even, you guys aren't even technically independent. You guys still, like, on paper report to the Queen, don't you? No, we're independent, but it's just Canada was founded on July 1st in whatever year. I don't know what it is, but we're not, like, we've never really been affiliated with the Queen. Or, we're just Canada, as you far sure? as I know. I'm, like, 80% sure that Canada was, well, at least, like, British Columbia, not British Columbia, uh... Oh my gosh, now Monk's asking if I want a history lesson. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure Ontario, somewhere in Ontario, was a, uh, British colony. Wasn't mm. half owned by Britain and half owned by France at one time? I well, that's for sure, which is why, which is why, um, uh, god damn it, where all your frogs are. Where are your frogs at, Fox? East side, right? Frogs? No, 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 no. Oh. they're, 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 it's just, just slightly west of Ontario. It's Quebec. Oh, okay. Are you oh, you French frogs. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <That's> Jeez. <the animal. laughs> that was that. that it's, it wouldn't be racist to be uh, nationalist, national, whatever. <laughs> Anyways. No, it's it's, it's, okay. it's not. It's, uh, yeah, God. Canada was under British rule, beginning with the 1763 Treaty of Paris, when New France, uh, of which the colony of Canada was part of, became formally part of the British Empire. Yeah, suck it. I win. I know more about okay. Canadian history than a Canadian. <laughs> yeah, I don't care about history. It's not something okay. For me, uh, history was all just oh, memorize all these dates and that's it. And I suck at memorizing, so I just like literally passed over and never learned anything. That's totally fine. I was just kidding, anyways. Canadian history isn't interesting to me either. Don't worry. None of the history. <laughs> so I, yeah. I'm just being an asshole. I'm just kidding. Either way, I don't really care because it's not like we have like any huge thing. I just. <laughs> but yeah, the fourth is is ours. So Ben, Becky, you guys okay for a Saturday? Yeah. yeah. Something? All right. Then we will pick it up on the sixth. Uh, ben, are we playing tomorrow? Yeah. Okay. Uh, do you want to drop that in Discord so that Saco knows? 